Guys, I'm back. One minute. <clears throat> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <clears throat> Yo, I'm live. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hope everyone is doing well today. Um, I'm just about better. For context, I lost my voice <coughs> after the subathon. It's just about back. The only thing I have left now is a cough, and it gives me like insane migraines like friday to friday saturday sunday today's monday vod watchers um i had like level eight pain migraines it literally felt like my head was going to explode it was horrible um but i feel just about there today i wanted to stream today because today is holiday it is indigenous people's day we hate columbus me and the homies hate columbus but I'm going to be doing as much of the Pikachu or Detective Pikachu Returns playthrough as I can in one sitting. It says the story is about 12 hours long, so we'll see how far I get. Before we get started though, let's do a bit of catching up. What have I done the past few days? Well... Oop. <laughs> Hold. There we go. What have I done the past few days? Um, I edited when I wasn't streaming. New main channel video. Which is the best Pokemon mobile game? The video is like an hour long, but it shows like primarily gameplay. Because I, I tried to do like voice acting for the gameplay. <clears throat> so that is up. It did surprisingly well. Like, it got 150 views in two days, which is really good. Today I have a cold... Blonde Chai Latte. It's from Safeway. Oh, I need to get a napkin that's dripping. Whatever. And then what else? What else did I do? I don't know how long my voice will last, so I'm just gonna stream until my voice, like, dies. Oh yeah, new best of compilation. I edited this this morning because I forgot to yesterday. 
I literally prepped the clips. I just did it down. I didn't edit them. So, it is a three minute comp. We had a good handful of clips. Full version is on YouTube because Twitter only lets me upload a minute or two minute, 20 second videos. So full video is on YouTube. It's muted on purpose. It's muted on purpose. So you actually go watch it. Um, let's see, who was the best clipper? Here's the chart. Oh, it's flipped. Let's see, Wolves won, so Wolves will get a gift card later this month when I get my Twitch payout, and Wolf got VIP, Rip Cokes, W, Wolves. If you want a chance to get VIP and a Twitch gift card yourself, all you must do is clip as many moments from the stream as you like. And I must like the clip, you can't clip stupid shit. Okay, what else? What else? Oh, yeah! Let's go ahead and get started with the actual game. <laughs> I was trying to think of a funny title. <laughs> this is what I came up with. Um, this shot, this picture that I took. So, I didn't tell you guys this, but... <coughs> holy moly. Dude, I don't know how long I could go today. <laughs> I'm gonna try and do voices. I'm gonna try my best. I haven't streamed in a few days. I feel bad. Um, my sister, when I said she went on a trip last weekend, I lied. She actually went to Japan, that little shit. She can hear me in the next room. She used all of her savings on the trip because it was a matter of like... Because she planned this trip like months in advance and she couldn't get a refund. So it's like either you lose the cost of the trip or you just go and take the L so she took the L and she got like Japan exclusive like imagery for Detective Pikachu because she went to the Pokemon store this weekend or last week so she got me this and it's like a faux newspaper and it's all in Japanese I don't know how to read it and then the back It's actually really cool. They didn't have any, like, Detective Pikachu merch, unfortunately. Like, I would have wanted, like, a little plushie or something. And then she also got... Like, a little foldable... Leaflet. It's like those magazines your dad keeps in the drawer. <laughs> they open up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Editor, cut that out, please. <laughs> I was trying to plan a few bits for today. Like, I was gonna get a trench coat, but then the shop didn't have any trench coats. I was gonna get a magnifying glass, but the shop didn't have any either, so it's like, the bits are ruined. <clears throat> Guys, it's 11 11 make a wish. All I have is my coffee. I did buy the game, I didn't steal it. When I bought it at GameStop, I got it Friday evening at, or no, I got Friday afternoon, and it was the second to last coffee they had in the store because everybody else pre ordered. But thankfully, I got it. Okay. I'm gonna change the category, and then we can get started. I think on Twitch, there is no category for Detective Pikachu Return, so we're just gonna do Detective Pikachu. That way, everybody knows what we're doing. Okay. Now, I think we can get started with Detective Pikachu Returns. New game! I'm gonna try new voices for everyone. <clears throat> the name's Pikachu. And I'm what you might call a great detective. Me too. With my bolts of brilliance, I've solved many mysteries. My partner Harry and I ran into some trouble on a case. Harry suddenly disappeared, 
and I lost all my memories. <laughs> what? <laughs> After that, I was wandering the city when I ran into Tim. Somehow, he could understand what I was saying. Our goals Okay, this has got to be for the first game. Find Detective Harry. Because my missing partner just so happened to be Tim's dad. What? While we were searching for Harry, we uncovered a series of crimes involving R, a chemical that drove Pokemon berserk. Is it fentanyl? Tim and I managed to solve the case and save Rhyme City. And yet... He died! Harry was still missing. Oh. Even now... The two of us are still searching for him. I bet we won't find his dad. Harry... Just where the heck did you go? <laughs> I think it's funny when they censor hell with heck. It's hilarious to me. <laughs> Title screen? And so, to promote an even stronger bond between the people and Pokemon of Rhyme City, I hereby proclaim this day the start of Pokemon Friendship Week. To commemorate this event, we present this award to Tim Goodman and Pikachu, who say- Harry! Pikachu, great detective known for his bolts of Pikachu. brilliance. Oh, Pikachu, I'm sorry. I guess that's a sign I better wrap this up. Yeah, resident sleeper Pikachu. <laughs> <sighs> Tim Goodman, wearing his iconic red wow. hoodie. You couldn't have picked a worse time to doze off. Sorry, sorry. Now then, due to the R incident of two years ago, some of our citizens began to doubt Rhyme City's motto, coexistence with Pokemon. So to those of you who were affected, I offer you my deepest sympathies. Owen Myers, mayor of Rhyme City. What's that? A Corviknight? Corviknight slices the sky on metal wings. Goddamn crows. Dude, it's just one Pokemon. Everyone, just like blast them. You know, get your tanks out. What the heck is going on? Could it be? Or? Or? Don't think so. Its behavior is different. It's all right. Just calm down. <laughs> 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 Pikachu. Oh my god, he took his head! Corviknight! It just made off with my signature hat! Oh, my dad gave you that hat. Yeah, we gotta get it back. You know how important that hat is to me, and Corviknight just flew off with it. What a mess. Let's go get it back. Hmm. What's that? Hey, Tim, over here. Oh, he plays Tim. I wanted to play as Pikachu. Whoa! Hey, over here, Tim. <laughs> Dude, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just looking. I'm doing investigating. Look, this must be the notebook the mayor dropped. Oh, there's something inside. A family photo. This girl looks familiar. No, oh, she's the one who didn't look too happy during the mayor's speech. That's my classmate, Rachel. She knows a lot about Pokemon. Huh? Whoa, whoa, time out. You know her? Why am I just now learning this? We should return this notebook to Mayor Myers. Yeah, but first we gotta deal with Corviknight. Right. Let's go, Pikachu. You gotta figure out the voice for Tim. Hmm. Hmm, now what do we do? That's... Uh oh, this doesn't look good. Bit of a regular sight in Rhyme City's parks. Oh! Is that Pit of unconscious? Don't touch it. Moving this Pokemon could injure it. 
Hey you, big guy, what happened to bit of? I'm walking in. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm at a loss. Nothing we've tried so far is working. Hey, can you even hear me? You, tell your Pikachu's Pika Pika chatter and evacuate the area. Will Butler, Chief of the Pokemon Protection Bureau. Dude, look at his shirt! Holy moly! Audino, can hear how healthy you are. I need to track down Corviknight and get this area evacuated, but I can't just leave this pit over here. Hey, what happened? Calm down, Pikachu. To everyone else, you're just saying Pika Pika. I'm the only one who understands what you're saying. Oh, right. Sorry. Got a little worked up seeing Pitov in such bad shape. Okay, Tim. It's on... It's on you to ask the big guy what went down. Excuse me, what happened here? Hmm. Oh, you're that young detective. Yes, I'm Tim Goodman, and this is my partner, Pikachu. Will Butler, Pokemon Protection Bureau, and this Audino is with the police department's rescue squad. <laughs> I'm debating if I want to do, like, monotone, like voices for the Pokemon or actually like act out the Pokemon I I I do think it's funnier to do like just deadpan Pokemon voices it's what I've done in the past I think it's hilarious I think I'll keep committing to that bit <clears throat> I'm gonna be drinking a lot today I'm gonna do deadpan. I'm gonna do it. Aw, oh, Dino. I'll spare you the details. Right now, we need to help this pit up. All that wind Corbinite whipped up, it blew around and knocked it out. I do know you used to move to help Pitov recover, but it still hasn't woke up. Aw, oh, Dino. I don't know if I like it or not. Chief! No civilian injuries to report at this time. I'll be that. Great work. Now I really should get back to leading the evacuation, but I can't just leave Pitov here unconscious. You ought to clear out of here too, young detective. Mr. Butler, let us help you take care of Pitov. We'll find a way to wake it up. Yeah, let a couple of great detectives handle this. <laughs> what was that? That was totally wrong. <clears throat> you. Hmm. This is an emergency situation, one that requires my full attention. Maybe I should let you help. Alright, I'll leave what you get off this pit off to you. I'm counting on you, young detective. Yes, sir. Let's go, Pikachu. Okay. Ooh. Hmm? Hey, why don't we talk to those other pit off? Sure, let's give it a shot. Is there no, like, Pokemon, like, EMT? Wait, 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 look at Pikachu's running animation. Sorry, I want I wanted to see you run. <laughs> he looks like he's struggling to keep up. Hold on a sec, Tim. Before we talk to these guys, there's something I need to tell you. Yeah, what is it? Cases don't just pop up when it's convenient for us. I don't gotta tell you that, right? Right? And it's been a good long while since our last case. Well, that's true. <clears throat> so let's hit pause and jog our memories of how we go about investigating a case. We'll do this one by the book, alright? If you say so. Tim, this is our first investigation in a long time. Fortunately, Pitov's injuries are just have already, ju are already healed. All we gotta do is find a way to wake it up. Some might call it coincidence, but me? I call it an opportunity for a detective work tutorial. Perfect, right? I suppose. Let's refresh our memory and make sure we conduct a full investigation. Okay, got it. First, let's quickly go over how we investigate. I talk to the Pokemon. And I talk to the people. Together, the two of us will gather evidence and take te testimonies from people and Pokemon and piece them all together to solve the case. Yep, that's how we do it. Exactly. Okay, this round of questioning is all yours, Pikachu. Sure thing. 
Here I go. Hey, Pitov, can I talk to you? I'm guessing you're pals with that unconscious Pitov. Mind if I ask you a couple questions? Cool. It says their friend's taking a nap and won't wake up. So, it thinks that unconscious Pitov is just sleeping? Goo-goo! Okay, I'll, I'll voice act the Pokemon, I'll do it. For the fans. <clears throat> you really love the smell of- wait, huh? What's that got to do with anything? Goo-goo! Nice strong aroma makes the sleepy times go away. That's what it's saying. You'd think that these Pitov would be more concerned about their unconscious friend instead of chirping about some smell. I'm gathering there's a certain aroma that Pitov are really into. Guess that's all we're gonna get. Maybe we should question some of the other Pitov around here. Dude, it's, it's so clear what Pitov is trying to say. All you gotta get is some, like, smelly salts. And Pitov will wake up. Hey, Tim. Come here for a sec. Okay, consulting Pikachu. If you get stuck during your investigation and see the light bulb icon in the lower left corner of the screen, you can press the left button cons to consult Pikachu and get a hint. Hmm. Call me before you go anywhere. Hmm. I'm a little curious about what that Pitov was saying. Yeah, its friend is unconscious and all it wanted to talk about was an aroma it likes. Yep. Nice, strong aroma makes the sleepy times go away. That's all I could get out of it. Aroma, sleepy times, go away. Wait, what if I was talking about using some kind of scent? And what if that scent could wake up its friend? That's it, Tim. If we can find the strong aroma these Pitov were chirping about, maybe it'll wake up their unconscious friend. That's what I'm thinking. It's worth a shot, at least. But how are we going to find a scent like that? <clears throat> Yeah, there's a lot of talking in this game. <laughs> I was not anticipating this. Good thing I have my chai. <clears throat> there might be some Pokemon who haven't evacuated yet. Maybe we can ask them. Hmm. That reminds me. Hey, listen up, Tim. If you're having trouble during an investigation, you can call out to me anytime. I can give you advice discreetly so no one else notices. Of course, you can also just mull things over on your own. But if you get stuck, it might be a good idea to take a break or retrace your steps. That's important too. The submenu. You can press the plus button during gameplay to open the submenu. In this menu, you can save the game and change your game settings. You can press the ZL button during gameplay to reread recent conversations. Oh, that's gonna be helpful. Older conversations eventually disappear, so be careful not to forget what was said. Okay, here we go. Okay, now we got to interview Pokemon. <laughs> He's dead! Hang in there, Pitov. Anino? Hey, any idea where you can find a nice, strong aroma? Uh, don't know. I guess you wouldn't know, huh? <laughs> cool. You're all worried about your friend, huh? Hey, the walking speed is so janky. It makes me feel like I'm going faster than I should. Hey, Cab. You should evacuate too, Detective. Ooh, wait, there's a spear up there. You can't talk to him. Oh! Is this guy here? Magnemite. Magnemite. Levitates using electromagnetism. <clears throat> a little joy from... Um... A little jolt from Magnemite here might be just what Pitov needs to wake up. 
Yeah, you can't use your moves, so you'd have to ask Magnemite to do the jolting for you. Let's not go there. You know I'd use my moves if I could. Mag? Oh, I'll tell you what the problem is. We've got a pit of that won't wake up. I was thinking one of your electric type moves could jolt it awake, though probably only as a last resort. Mag, mag. Oh, you'd be willing to help us out? Thanks. If all else fails, we'll hit you up for an electrifying assist. Mag. If we can't wake up Pito, we'll ask you to help us. Okay, so that's the last resort. Got it. Ah. Zatu stares into the great beyond. That's Zatu. I can never tell what it's staring at or what it might be thinking. But that's the sort of Pokemon who's always got all kinds of incredible knowledge. I don't know about that, but let's try asking if it knows anything about how to wake up Pitov. <coughs> Way out of you. Hey, Zatu. Can you hear me? Hey. It's not saying anything. I wonder what's wrong. Two. Oh. It wants peace and quiet while it's sunbathing. It's awfully calm, given all the commotion going on. Hmm. Maybe we should try asking someone else. Hmm. It's singing about how much it loves this aroma. Wait, if Pirov loves this aroma, then maybe... It's gotta be the Pokemon. Oh. Aroma Tease exudes an enchanting aroma. Aroma? You're Aroma Tease, aren't you? What are these Pirovs surrounding you for? Aroma? Huh. They started flocking to it as soon as it got here. These Pitov have been following Aroma Tees around? Coo coo. You're asking it to make the nice aroma? Coo coo. Hurry up, make the nice aroma. Aroma, aroma. The Pitov are really getting on its nerves. Seems like these Pitov are all drawn to a scent that Aroma Tees emits. Which means Aroma Tees might be able to help us wake up the unconscious Pitov. Good thank you, Pikachu. Let's ask let's ask if Romatiz is willing to help us out. Um Hey there, Romatiz, we could use some help. Aromatiz. It'll help us out if we can get these Pitov to stop following around. Fair enough, let's talk to the Pitov. I just hope they understand us. You know who else might understand? <laughs> um, the followers, because guys, we are 30 minutes in the stream. So if you're new here, click the follow button. You get cool emotes and you get to dive in chat. If you're already following, make sure your notifications turned on that we don't miss a single stream. Dude, my throat doesn't hurt too much because I was drafting out this joke the other day because <clears throat> I'm obviously not. <laughs> I was going to tweet it out, but I'm not going to. Because I took like this throat spray and it's supposed to like numb your throat to like make it stop hurting not for anything nefarious right <laughs> so I was gonna draft out a tweet I, I texted it to my friend and they like literally limb out um, audibly not through text but it was like guys throat numbing spray does wonders for not what you think Check W. But my voice is just about back. Why is he sneezing? Why is this idle animation sneezing? <laughs> That's so weird. Dude, put a mask on, Pikachu. We can't have you sneezing on the witnesses. 
<clears throat> cool. Sorry to ask you this, but could you move, you know, somewhere else? Hey, now is not the time to stop and smell the aromas. We're trying to help your friend here. Say, guess what? Pretty soon Aroma Tease is gonna go make lots of nice aromas right over <laughs> there. Two. They're on board with the nice aromas over there plan. So they'll move? Great. Easy. Aroma Tease should be willing to help us out now, right? Aroma. It's happy to lend a hand now that we got those pit up to move. Great. Let's take Aroma Tease back to the square. Okay, Aroma Tease, here's the pit of. Please help it. Aroma. Oh, Lee. Glad that worked. Another job well done. Oh, his shoes has lightning bolts on him. <clears throat> Will Butler. Pit of the wake. Ah, Dino, ah, Dino. Wow, Aroma Tease's scent is nice. But it's kind of like a really strong perfume. I don't get why the Pit of like it so much. Coo. Coo, coo. Coo, coo, coo. Glad you're enjoying it. Aroma. Yep, you are a huge help, Aroma Tease. Thanks. Mm. Excellent work, young detective. That perked pit of right, right up. I didn't even consider getting help from the other Pokemon in the area. Oh, yeah. Come to think of it, a police officer was calling this big guy cheap. I wonder why. How about you ask him and find out? Hey, about you, Mr. Butler. Yes, I'm Will Butler, chief of the BPB. <laughs> PPB. <laughs> the PPB? We're an organization dedicated to protecting the Pokemon of Rhyme City. The Pokemon Protection Bureau. So, it's kind of like the police, but focused on Pokemon. I didn't know we had something like that. The Bureau only recently started its official operations. At the moment, we're powering office space at the Rhyme City Police Station and cooperating with the police. We were dispatched to provide security, but well, just look at what happened. I can't believe a fiasco this big occurred on my watch. It's honestly an embarrassment. <clears throat> About the Pokemon Protection Bureau. We were formed two years ago as a response to the infamous R incident, the case you two solved. Back then, the Pokemon-related disturbances were happening all over the city. The human and Pokemon residents of Rhyme City were deeply affected by that. Mayor Myers was so shaken by what occurred, he took it upon himself to create the PPB as a countermeasure. He wanted to make sure crimes involving Pokemon, like the R incident, would never happen again. That's why this organization exists. Isn't keeping the peace the police's job, though? In the past few years, Rhyme City has seen a concerning rise in the number of reported incidents and accidents. The police are struggling to handle so many incidents, including these involving the Pokemon. It's cause they're defunding us, the goddamn liberals. <laughs> Hi, Go Boba, welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Hello. Dude, my voice is still dead. I'm just gonna have to take. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to take breaks. Are you forced to play as a man? No, we're playing as Tim. I lost my dad. <clears throat> I 
By now, the police can protect the human population of Rhyme City, while the PPB protects the- I cannot <laughs> Just saying PPB is, is too hard for me. Okay, I'm gonna reset. Reset. By now, the police can protect the human population of Rhyme City, while the PPB protects the Pokemon. By dividing up the work, we can keep everyone safe. Ah, so that's why the PPB was formed. Just what I'd expect from Rhyme City. Howard really is looking out for us Pokemon, huh? By the way, young detective, I was watching your investigation earlier and couldn't help but notice. Were you explaining things to Pikachu? Huh? I don't think Pikachu understands what you're telling him, though. Unless the two of you can... Um... I'm not actually talking to him. It's more like getting advice. No, that's not it. It's... Oh, I get it. You talk to Pikachu to organize your own thoughts. <laughs> Interesting way to form your deductions, if you ask me. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Hmm. Well, we do understand each other, actually. Phew, that was close. I thought he'd catch on to us. Be careful. Usually folks wouldn't believe we can talk to one another. Police officer. Whoa! Ah! Drama? He's back. back again. Come on, let's chase it down. Sir! Dude, they're walking. We need to see oh. a little pep in your step, officers. It's Covenant again. Hey, give me back my hat, would ya? I'm walking in. The chief went after Covenite in, the, in his patrol car. I bet Covenite still has my hat. Let's follow it. Eggs? <laughs> Those are Pokemon cries. Sounds like they're coming from the direction Covenite flew off in. Well, let's go check it out. Now, I think Covenite went to the land. How's the game been so far? A lot of lore. A lot of talking. But you know what? I love story games. Oh. Whoa. Pikachu, look. Well, how do you like those apples? They're scattered all over the place. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> Is this a tree? And it's growing here. It's kind of weird. Unless? Unless what? No, no. This is definitely weird. Dude, how, have they never seen a, a Loan Executor? Applin lives in an apple. Wait, it's a worm? Wait, I thought the Pokemon was the actual apple. Is it a worm? Oh my god, I hate new Pokemon. App! It's dangerous here, Applin. You should find somewhere that's safe. App? That's odd. It doesn't seem like it wants to leave. Let's talk to it. Hey. hey. I haven't seen any Applin in this city before. Where'd you come from? App, app. Oh. You go to sleep in a wooden crate, and when you wake up, you're always someplace new. So, the apple vendor travels to different locations, and the applin gets carried along. The apple vendor probably doesn't know about this applin. App. Something suddenly shook it awake a moment ago. I'll bet that was Covenant. Same goes for those crates getting toppled over. I don't see the apple vendor. They must have evacuated the area. Ah, ah. So, the wooden crate shook, you got thrown out, and that's when you realized your friends were missing? They got separated? Then let's help find its friends. Go thinking. How many friends were here with you? Ah. Two? Okay, got it. I think they're in that pile over there. From what Applin said, I think I get what's going on here. 
but as much as I'd like to go get my hat back from Covenite. We can't just abandon a Pokemon in need of our help. Yeah, what kind of great detective would we be if we didn't lend a helping hand or two along the way? Okay, should we investigate the fallen apples over there? I'd be happy to, if there weren't a tree in the way. Something about it seems odd to me. Maybe we should investigate that first. <laughs> hmm, I wonder what this tree is. <clears throat> the Pokemon communicating is so cute. Yeah, the only thing I wish is if for the actual, like, Pokemon dialogue, instead of saying Pokemon noises, it would say the actual thing the Pokemon is saying. Instead of Detective Pikachu just translating. But then I also understand that's how it like actually sound in real life. This chai is not helping my throat, I just realized. I'm not gonna drink more of this. I ain't gonna do it. <clears throat> okay, so we can't investigate because this tree's in the way. What should we do about it? Well, we can't just cut it down. Egg, eggs, eggs. Whoa, this tree's an executor. Ain't no way. <laughs> executor, no form. Towering tropical Pokemon. Wait, isn't this an Alolan Executor? I've never seen one before, so I didn't even realize that. What's it doing here in Rhyme City? Why don't we ask and get some other questions and while we're at it? We can't investigate until it moves anyway. Dude, just go around. It's literally, you can walk two paces to the right and squeeze behind. <clears throat> hey, Executor, over here! Look down, by your feet! Egg? Eggs? Eggs? Whoa, don't, 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 don't talk all at once. How about this, Executor? I'll tell you which head should answer. Sound good? Egg, eggs, eggs! Oops, forgot to say what head. Hey. Um, you, the middle is head. Why are you here? Eggs? Guess it's been traveling around with the apple vendor. That explains why it's here in Rhyme City. Hey. What happened to you? You, right Ed. Tell me what happened here. Eggs. Corviknife came flying through, and then when you tried to dodge, you bumped into the fruit stand. I knew it. By the way, have you seen a hat? Covenite took mine. Eggs. Guess it happened too suddenly for you to tell. Oh well. Um, Lovehead, we got a favor to ask. Egg? Sorry, but we want to search through those apples scattered behind you. Could you please scooch over a bit? Egg? Mm -hmm. Oh good, it moved for us. Now we can investigate the scene. This is where all the apples got scattered around. Let the investigating begin. Hmm. Remember what we're looking for? The two missing applin. That's right, there's a lot of apples here, so try not to overlook them, okay? Hmm, I wonder which one it is. And one of them is this one. You, you could literally see it blinking. <laughs> Look, an applin, I found one. Uh -huh. Have you been sitting still pretending to be an apple this whole time? That must take a whole lot of patience. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Huh? Patiently staying still is one of your talents? Impressive. That covenant got you wrapped up in quite the mess though, didn't it? Your friend is waiting for you. Okay, there's no other double-leaved applin. It's gotta be under the crate. Nope. 
It's an apple crate. No sign of apple in them. There are apples everywhere. I don't see any apple. In. At this point, these apples are only good for making juice or jam or something. I'd still eat them, bruises and all. Mm. Well, we searched pretty thoroughly. I still don't see my hat or the other apple, in, though. Hmm. Where could it be? A ghost? Huh? huh? Did you see something move behind that crate? What? No, I didn't notice anything. Try checking again. Maybe something's changed. Our hat! <clears throat> My hat! Love and I dropped it. Could have sworn it wasn't here earlier. Anyway, I'm just glad to have it back. I bet you a million dollars the apple is under that. A million. <sighs> this was a real pain. Eh? Huh? Hey, hey, get back here. The heck? Nani? Hey, quit playing around. Hey, I'm not playing at all. My hat keeps moving on its own. That's ridiculous, Pikachu. Huh? See? Told you so. Executor. Guess I've got to go get it. Guess so. Lime Executor. Well, Tim, lift me up. Okay. You all right? Don't hurt yourself. Please, this will be nothing. Look at him go! Holy! Oh! Imagine! I was not expecting a QTE at all. <laughs> Imagine? It's just like Mulan. Okay. Fine and dandy. Nice catch, by the way. Are the Applin okay, too? Yep, they all seem happy to be reunited. Good. Glad they're all right. So one of them was wearing my hat, huh? Seeing him move on its own really threw me for a loop. I'm sure Cub and I dropped the hat mid-flight and it just happened to fall on top of Applin. Oh, yeah. Hey, Tim, where's my hat? Don't worry. I've got it. At the end of the day, I'm just glad I didn't lose my hat. Yeesh, that was a hassle. Uh, <laughs> ah, now that's more like it. Yeah, you look like yourself again. Thanks, Tim. Harry gave me this hat to commemorate our partnership. The award ceremony will resume shortly. We ask that all participants please return to the venue at this time. Uh I guess we better hurry back. That darn Corviknight. I'll let it off the hook just this once. Goddamn crows work. ruining Thank our fun. And you as well, Pikachu. Yep. I can't say it enough. Rhyme City owes you a debt of gratitude for your efforts. We strive for coexistence between people and Pokémon in our fair city. And you two are the ideal detective duo. On behalf of the city, I am pleased to present you with this medal. Thank you, Mayor Myers. I'm honored. 
Of course you get one too, Pikachu. Yeah, I'm the great detective. Pika Pika to you too, little hero. <laughs> Both of you. Keep up that great work. Imagine the mayor just said a slur. <laughs> Congratulations, Tom. There's like nobody at this ceremony. No turnout. Nobody cares. Later that evening, at Tim's apartment. Tim, I was so proud of you today. Irene Goodman, Tim's mother. You're amazing, Tim. Sophia Goodman, Tim's little sister. You think so? Everyone knows all about the amazing work you two have done. There was the Eevee abduction case, the fossil stealing spree, and the Rhine Tower standoff case, too. They even made a movie based on the R case. Yeah, I thought that movie was pretty good, but how come Mom and me didn't even show up in it? <laughs> I have no idea, but movies usually do their own thing, don't they? Yeah. Wait, are they yes. referencing the Detective Pikachu movie? Oh, by the way, <coughs> I didn't see it. To ask you something. This is Dad's Pikachu, right? Yeah, he's my partner at the moment, though. I see. Dude, what? Oh, what is a bobblehead? What's with all the staring? He saved your dad from trouble many times. Oh, Pikachu, the news is about to start. Maybe there's an update on that Corviknight. Yeah. I do have to say that I like the music in the game a lot. Hey. Oh. There are all these old case notes. Yep, it's all the stuff you told me to keep a record of. Not bad, Tim. There's a lot you can learn from past cases, you know. Show me what you got there. Oh. <laughs> the R case, huh? That takes me back. It was the first case we partnered up on. Yeah. R was a chemical that made Pokemon go berserk. It was created from Mewtwo's cells. When a Pokemon was given R, its eyes would glow red and would become enraged and violent. It was horrible. Even now, I still can't believe they used innocent Pokemon to cause all those incidents. Same. That was one tough nut to crack, but we managed to catch the culprit in the end. As for Me Too's cells and the remaining vials of R, we confiscated all that stuff when we brought the culprit to justice. Speaking of which, in our final confrontation with that guy, we managed to use one of your moves. You usually can't use any of your moves. How were you able to pull that off? Beats me. I'm just as baffled as you are, kid. After Harry went missing, I lost all my memories for some reason. That's also when I realized I couldn't use any moves. Maybe the pressure of those intense situations is how you're able to use that move. Could be. It's a possibility, at least. After I used that move, I just blacked out. <coughs> I was really worried about you. Yeah, I think Pikachu has like PTSD or something. These are the medals we received. They're proof of all the good we've done with our great detective work. Let's keep it up, Tim. Oh, Pikachu has a little bit too. Yep. This is your first time in Rhyme City, right, Sophia? Uh-huh, it's so busy and fun. I'm glad I came. That night surprised me, though. I'm glad you and mom are okay. Right. I'm glad you're safe and doing well, Tim, but you hardly ever call. I know no news is supposed to be good news, but you take it a bit too far. 
Sorry, mom. Oh, yeah. Ask the mom about cooking. Jeez. Well... I haven't been into Rhyme City in quite some time now. Not la Not since I last saw your father. Gosh, I guess it's been about two years then. Speaking of which... Tim, are you getting enough to eat? Yeah, stopping by the Hi-Hat Cafe for breakfast is part of my daily routine. The Hi-Hat Cafe? It's Pikachu's favorite spot. It's so close now that we've moved and I've been going there pretty much every morning. Hmm. Maybe I should make some dinner for you tomorrow night then. It's been a while. You miss my cooking, don't you? Of course. Thanks, Mom. I'm looking forward to it. Classic housewife. Ooh, we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this breaking news. Oh. Huh? What's going on? According to amateur footage we've received from a viewer, Pokemon appear to have caused an explosion. What? This explosion occurred in the mountain range northeast of Rhyme City. This may be related to the recent uptick in incidents involving Pokemon. Rhyme City Police and the newly established Pokemon Protection Bureau are investigating. Amelia Christie, signing off. Hey, Tim. Did you catch that? I hope that incident the Pokemon doesn't have anything Pokemon to do have become with domestic terrors. Same here. You too told me. Two years ago. Dad's alive. And we'll be able to find him as long as we don't give up. Yeah. You too is still our only connection to finding Harry. Whispering to Pikachu, are you? Oh. You're just like your father, talking to Pokemon like that. Oh, <laughs> really? It's been two years since the R incident. Since then, we've solved all kinds of cases. The mayor even gave us an award for it. I can still talk to Pikachu and understand him. If the two of us keep solving cases together, I'm sure we'll find my dad someday. Damn, we'll never find him. But you know what some of you guys will find? An ad. Because we are an hour in the stream, so it's time for me to run some ads. You can avoid that ad by subscribing for $4.99. Just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing on the Or... You can link Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe. See if you have a Prime sub available. Get some water, get a snack. We'll see some of you guys in a few. <clears throat> okay, guys, I'm gonna be honest. I did not realize there'd be this much dialogue in the game. <coughs> I think I'll play for like one more hour. Because this is way too much talking. I don't want to break my throat today. I'll stream for one more hour. Mainly because I want to see what happens to his dad. Hmm. Okay, let's think about it. I do not think we will find... Wait. I do not think we'll find the father. Because if we find his dad, then the little kid has no motive. There will be no sequel after this one. So just for lore's sake and keeping the franchise alive, we cannot find the father in this game. It's not going to happen. Or we're going to find the father, and the father's going to have, like, his own new family. And he would have forgotten about us. That's the only scenario I see happening. The day after the award ceremony. Rhyme City. Whimsicott rides the wind from town to town. Whoa, that's a lot of Whimsicott. Sure is. They ride through on seasonal winds every year. I hear they can be real pranksters. If they get in a house they like, they scatter cotton everywhere. Sounds like a pain to clean up. Yep. They're cute though. How could you get mad at them? 
The sweet smell of coffee is calling my name. It's the perfect Pikachu bait. <laughs> Tim! Frank Holiday, Rhyme City Police Inspector. Inspector Holiday, did you finally find my dad? Imagine. Sorry. No. I'm here on a different case. We've received reports of a jewel theft. Could you lend me a hand with this one? Of course. The incident occurred at the Dennis residence, the mansion down the street. Sorry, but Brad is waiting for me. I'll go ahead and meet up with you there. Ah, so much for my coffee. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, let's go, Pikachu. Wait a second, Tim. What for? There's no need to rush. You gotta be calm and unheard if you want to do your best investigating. Yeah, I, I guess that's true. Chatting with Pikachu. Pikachu is a real talkative Pokemon. If you see this Pikachu icon in the lower left corner of the screen, you can press the right button to chat with him. Sometimes Pikachu will try to get your attention, and a Pikachu icon will bounce to let you know he wants to talk. If you see this icon bouncing, press the right button to see what Pikachu has to say. Hi, <laughs> quit. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hi, Quack. Welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Hello. Hey, Jim. Look, I know we need to hurry, but would it really hurt if we relaxed a bit? For instance... Oh, here's a good idea. You could listen to some sage advice from a great detective like me. Okay. Okay, he's just stalling. If he wants a coffee, just say you want a coffee. Oh, but Holiday's waiting. We better go join him. Whoa. As much as I hate to admit it, we don't have time to drink coffee right now. Aw, oh, come on. Sorry, man. Great detective tip number Ooh, guys, seven. guys, get your notepad out. Begin every investigation by taking your client's word at face value. Okay. From there, forget your preconceived notions and gather the facts until you uncover the truth. So don't be biased. Dude, is Pikachu just gonna keep talking to me? Hey, Tim, no need to hold back, you know. Talk to me whenever you want. I'm right here, after all. He sounds like the over-supportive friend. <coughs> what else? Detective tip number nine. No pads? People who lie during their testimony. They usually look up and to the right. That's just something I personally observed. Oh my god, he has so much dialogue. I'm, I'm gonna ignore him. Indeed, he really helps loosen up the knots in my shoulders. Hariyama's partner. Oh no, Hariyama's facing off against Polyrath again. Why does he act out like this? He's usually so gentle. Mm -hmm. Is something wrong? My partner Hariyama, he loves showing off his strength, especially when he can test it against someone else's. And since Polyrath is also proud of its muscles, Hariyama considers it his rival. Once they start going at it, it's hard to stop them. Yikes. Guess you better avoid that alley for now. Are there trials in this game? <laughs> Like Trump's trial? <laughs> Maybe. Wrath. Hariya. A Polyrath and a Hariyama. They're squaring off. You can cut the tension with a knife. It looks like this. <coughs> it looks like a fight could break out any second. We should probably avoid this alley so we don't accidentally set them off. Do you not have, like, the Pokeball? Just, like, chuck it at him. That should work, right? Hey, Tim, that's not the way to the crime scene. Okay, this game is not gonna let me explore, that's D-U-N. Maractus's partner. Great job, Maractus. Your dancing is so cute. From the top. One, two, one, two. Maraca, raca. Hi, 
How about a little snack for you and your partner? <laughs> These menu items use all sorts of different berries. With so many choices, they could cater to any Pokemon's taste. Hmm. We'll have to save that for later. Tim is such an old name. Weird to see somebody young with it. Really? I know a few people named Tim. I know a few in school. There was like two or three at my school. Frank Holiday. I appreciate you coming on such short notice, Tim. This way, the crime took place at the dentist's residence up ahead. <laughs> Just walk. <laughs> Hey, Pikachu, keep up. Oh my gosh. It's the White House. Well, 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 if it isn't the great detectives. I don't think he likes us. Brad McMaster, Rhyme City Police Lieutenant. Magnetric. Dedicated to law and order. It's been a while, Brad. I see you're on the case, too. <laughs> I suppose that means you are as well. You private detectives do love sticking your noses into every little thing. If Mr. Dennis hadn't requested you personally, I'd be asking you to leave right now. Yep, he's still a jerk. Think he's still holding a grudge from that time we showed him up? Manic? He says no funny business. Sheesh, no wonder you two are partners. That's enough, Brad. We're going to be conducting this investigation together. This is the scene of the crime, right? Yes. This mansion belongs to Sanji Dennis, a jeweler. The Dennis residence. Hmm. Mr. Dennis is one of the wealthiest men in Rhyme City. Under normal circumstances, a civilian like yourself would never have the opportunity to meet him. Make sure you don't do anything to offend him. Oh, and don't get in the way of our investigation either. He's just gonna get a dig in somewhere, doesn't he? Okay, Tim, come inside. Making a Pokemon detective game was such an interesting choice. I kind of like it. Like, I like story games a lot. Ooh, the missing jewel. Dennis residence. Room one, or first floor. Dude, it's Dennis a hotel. I see. How can you, like, live comfortably in a house like this? To me, that's insane. <clears throat> like, even if the story is cringe and D.O.M., I'm still gonna enjoy it. I'm, I'm here for the ride, you know? Alright, Tim. Mr. Dennis is waiting for you in the room to the right. Thanks, Inspector Holiday. Did I play the original Detective Pikachu? No, I didn't have a DS. Oh, Tim, I've been waiting for you. Sanjeev Dennis, jeweler. Oh. Growlithe, guard at the Dennis residence. My name is Sanjeev Dennis, I'm a jeweler. And this is my partner, Growlithe. Growl. I'm Detective Tim Goodman, and this is my partner, Pikachu. Sorry to jump right into it, but could you please tell us about what you know about the incident? Oh. A precious jewel was stolen while it was out of the house. It's called the Aurora Drop, and it's a very rare jewel indeed. The Aurora Drop. What a mysterious name. Magical, even. 
The thief injured one of my staff members and made off with the jewel. Thankfully, my staff members' injuries were minor, and yet... Is something sticking out to you as odd? Well, the police are treating my, treated, my trusted butler as the prime suspect. They think the butler did it. Could you tell me a bit more about the stolen jewel? It looks like this. Most gemstones must first be cut and polished into beautiful jewels, but the aurora drop is said to have naturally formed into its shape. The way it shines looks a bit like an aurora. Yes, that's precisely how it's got its name. The aurora drop has been the subject of many a tale, but it was thought to be nothing more than fiction. Even among us jewelers, for the longest time, we called it the Jewel of Legend. Wow, he wasn't getting what he called it precious. Guess it's no surprise that someone wanted to steal it. It definitely sounds valuable. Where were you displaying it? I kept it securely locked within a special reinforced case inside my jewel storage room. There are locks on both the storage room door and the reinforced case. And yet, despite all that security, it still got stolen. Hmm, it sounds like an inside job. You mentioned that the police already you mentioned that the police already have a suspect. Yes, they believe that the thief is my own trusted butler, Barnes. Why do they think that? Because Barnes and I are the only people who can access the key to the storage room. What's keeping someone from getting into it? The key is always kept around Growlithe's neck. If anyone but Barnes or myself attempted to take it off from her, Growlithe would start barking. My Growlithe is a very loyal Pokemon. She would never allow the key to be taken by a stranger. I don't see a key around Growlithe's neck right now. The police think Barnes took it. <clears throat> that would certainly make sense, assuming Barnes really is the culprit. Yeah, I need to work on Pikachu's voice, because it's too similar to the Sajeev's. Hey, I'm one. <laughs> Should I just do <coughs> faux Barnes <Boston? laughs> I'm walking in, I'm Pikachu. <laughs> Whew. Mr. Dennis, if possible, I'd like to talk with Barnes. He's currently being questioned by the police. But you don't believe Barnes is the thief, is that correct? I've known Barnes since we were young. He's worked in this home for years and has always served us well. I'm certain he'd never steal from me. And I couldn't possibly imagine him hurting anyone. So you're saying Barnes didn't do it and the real corporate is still at large. That's right. Someone must have stolen the jewel. Please help me prove that Barnes is innocent. Ah. So that's why he's called us here, to clear his butler's name. We'll talk to Barnes later. Hmm. So, finding the Aurora drop and clearing Barnes of suspicion... Those are the two things you called us here to do. Could you please? You're the only ones I can count on. Our job is to investigate the case and reveal the truth. We won't know if Barnes is truly innocent until we look into this more. Yeah, the police must have at least some reason to suspect him. But we'll do what we can. If that's acceptable to you, we'll take the case. That's more than acceptable. Thank you, Tim. Great. In that case, may I start investigating the scene of the crime? Of course, the jewel storage room is just upstairs. I know you won't let me down. Hey, wait a second, Tim. There's something I want to try, starting with this case. Something you want to try? Yeah, a case notebook. The writers for Detective Journals swear by it. <coughs> Detective Journal? That's the magazine you're always reading, right? Yep, that's the one. They've researched the most efficient way for detectives to organize their case notes. The solution they came up with was a case... The solution they came up with was... A case notebook. Sounds intriguing. How does it work? I'm getting to that. First, open up your notebook. How was the jewel stolen? First, let's write in the notebook any burning questions that arise while we're investigating. Hmm. We will summarize the testimony and evidence that we've gathered during our investigation on the page below. Hmm. 
After we've collected enough testimonies and evidence, the beginning de to the begin deducing option will appear. When you select this, we'll start deducing the answer to our questions. We don't have enough testimonies or evidence right now, but once we do, we'll be able to start deducing. I guess actually using the notebook is the best approach. So Tim, what do we have to do right now? We have to collect testimonies and evidence to figure out how the jewel was stolen. To do that, we'll first have to investigate the scene of the crime. That's right. Let's go check out the jewel storage room. Okay, so this is nice, like... That way, like, I literally don't have to remember lore. I can just look back at the notebook. What? Pros do not use the notebook! I take my own notes, see? <coughs> there is nothing on the paper. <laughs> The name of this painting is Silver Waves, and it depicts... Lugia, a Pokemon known as the Guardian of the Seas. It's rumored to live deep down in the ocean floor, but no one's ever seen it. That makes sense. The ocean floor is not exactly a place you'd just casually visit. Well, I can go in here. Hmm. It's some tea to serve to visitors. I'd prefer a coffee myself. Coffee? Let's talk to Growlithe. Growl? It's Dennis's partner, Growlithe. She sure doesn't look happy. Growl? Apparently she feels responsible. No wonder she's so down. Maybe we should leave her alone for a while. Looks like some jeweling tools have been left in here. I wonder if Mr. Dennis uses this room as a study, too. No, Growlithe is probably hungry. There's no food in her bowl. Whoa. Okay, I'm just passing the door. I didn't go in the door. The name of this painting is Golden Sunrise, and it depicts... Uh-oh, a Pokemon that's, that's spoken of in legends. They say it brings eternal happiness, and that its wings shine with a rainbow-colored light. Rainbow-colored light, huh? The painting sure is beautiful, but I'll bet the real thing is even more breathtaking. Man. <clears throat> hey, I got a couple questions to ask. Got a moment? Bionic? Don't want to waste time chatting while you're on duty, huh? Act awfully stubborn, aren't you? You're even harder to talk to than Brad's manager. Police officer. Lieutenant Matt McMaster is currently interviewing Mr. Barnes in this room. Excuse me. I guess it would be too much to ask for us to join in, right? I'm afraid we can't allow even the great detective Tim to do that. Police protocol, you understand. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Okay, let's go upstairs, enough stalling. This room is currently being searched by the police. We may be investigating a crime, but we should still respect the residents' privacy. We shouldn't go barging into rooms that have nothing to do with the case, Tim. True. We need to focus on the jewel storage room. The Pikachu running is so funny. <gasps> is that cotton? What's all this? Pokemon feathers? Sure looks like it. They're scattered all over the floor and the window's open. Maybe a Pokemon got in or out through there. Do you think it has anything to do with this case? Hmm. Look at this. One of these feathers is darker than the others. You're right. The other six are a lighter shade of blue. Hmm. Something about that is nagging on me. 
I see cotton on the floor. I think Pokemon blew in, they cop the jewel. It's a Ponzi scheme. The jewel storage room has been left exactly as it was at the time of the incident. Inspector Holiday's already filled me in. Please go right ahead. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, there's cotton all over the floor. Did they use the feather to pick open the lock? Hmm. Hmm. What is it, Pikachu? I checked out the door, but there are no signs of forced entry. But they can be fairly certain that the thief used a key to get in. According to Dennis, this room's where the Aurora drop used to be. Let's take a closer look. <laughs> what a beautiful jewel. It's so clear and sparkly, absolutely brilliant. A green jewel. That fresh green color reminds me of the forest. Just looking at it is calming. This one's a blue jewel. It's a deep blue like the ocean. It has kind of a magical feeling to it. It's a red jewel. What a vibrant red, like a boiling hot lava. It's almost too bright to look at. This area looks more disturbed than the rest. Let's start investigating. We might find a clue. All right, look, don't let any details slip past you, Tim. Let me see. Let's see. Where should we look first? <sighs> that looks like a part of the jewel case. Based on the shape, do you think the top half of the case was cut off? Yeah, it looks that way. It's a really clean cut. Slicing it must have taken one seriously sharp blade. I doubt a human could pull that off. I see a feather! Here's a blue feather. Do you think the Pokemon it belonged to was in this room? Maybe it's from a Pokemon that lives in the mansion. Let's look into that later. My hypothesis, um, the Pokemon are conspiring. A uh, bird Pokemon sliced it with aerial leaves and they copped it. <clears throat> this is the only case that's damaged. Must be where they kept the Aurora drop. The edge looks like it's been sliced clean with a blade. What kind of blade could slice through this cleanly such a sturdy jewel case? Hmm. There's some cotton on the ground. It looks really fluffy and soft. What's a bunch of cotton doing in here? The jewel case is still locked. Like Dennis said, the jewel in this case was stored under lock and key. And the key to the case is a different key than the one to the jewel storage room door. I wonder who has the key, then. Right. We have covered everything I was wondering about. Any other spots you want to check? Okay, let's start deducing. Okay, let's... great. We've got everything we need to make our deductions. Let's solve this puzzle, Tim. Okay. Let's begin deducing. 
You've probably figured out how the culprit stole the jewel by now, eh? Alright, so let's begin deducing in your case notebook. Okay. We have a few plausible theories. Which do you think is right? Okay, one. The culprit hasn't actually stolen the jewel yet. The culprit may not have taken the aroma drop out of the jewel storage room. Instead, it may have been hidden among the cotton fluff scattered throughout the room. That does not seem... Why would they leave it? That's so dumb. <clears throat> the culprit cut open the case and stole the jewel. The culprit somehow cut open the jewel case to steal the aroma drop. Or, the culprit unlocked the case and stole the jewel. The culprit may have used a key to unlock the jewel case that stole the aroma drop. Okay, there was no busted... Oh, wait. There was no- there would have been no need to cut it open. If they had the key. If it's just in the cotton... Why would they go through all the effort? It's gotta be this one. Okay. From what we've seen of the crime scene, we can tell that the jewel case was sliced open. After that, the aroma drop was removed from the case and taken away. Right. And we saw that the jewel case was still locked, which supports that claim. We still need to investigate more to determine how the case was sliced open. But at least now we know how the thief got their hands on the aroma drop. Yeah, we made our first step forward. Okay. <laughs> you understand how to use the case notebook now? Yep. Once I've got some evidence, I'll start deducing. Feel free to start deducing whenever you feel like it. Okay. That's kind of a cute way to break it down, though. Like, it obviously, I assume it will get more difficult later. Like, you might deduce the wrong thing, but I'm excited for when there's, like, a huge debate in a mission. <clears throat> After investigating the scene, we now know how the crime was carried out. We can be certain that the culprit sliced open the case and took the jewel from inside. But there's just one thing that's strange. Oh yeah? Yeah. Think, Tim. What's strange about the way the crime was committed? The gl Wait, that did not click. The glass was cut, but the door wasn't. Holy! Oh. Okay, that didn't click for me. <laughs> the door to the storage room was opened with a key. But the jewel case was still locked when it was sliced apart. That's right. So that means the thief only had one of the keys. The one to the storage room. They didn't have the key to the jewel case. According to Mr. Dennis, only he and Barnes can access the jewel storage room. I understand why the police suspect Barnes, but I'm not so sure. Obviously, it'd be best if we could talk to Barnes ourselves, but he's still being questioned. We need to ask Mr. Dennis about the lock on the jewel case. Right. After we wrap up here, let's go ask him. Hmm. Oop. <clears throat> All I want from Pikachu is to say objection. This is not a trial. We're investigating. And you know how you guys can also investigate my channel? By following, because guys, we're another 30 minutes in the stream, so if you never follow, you get cool emotes and you get to type in chat. Wow. If you're already following, make sure your notifications turned on. That way you don't miss a single stream. <clears throat> Wait, I told myself to not drink the chai. Oopsie. You're supposed to mix, like, the chai base with milk. And I think the milk is breaking my throat more. <laughs> Oopsie. How's the investigation going, Tim? Oh, Mr. Dennis. Sorry, I just couldn't stand waiting around. Have you discovered anything? It does appear that the culprit used the storage room key to get entry. We believe that they cut open the jewel case and took the aroma drop. Is that so? 
I suppose that doesn't help Barnes much since he has access to the key. I have a question for you, Mr. Dennis. Who has the key to the jewel case? I have it right here. I always carry the key to the jewel case on my person. I've known Barnes a very long time, but I still won't give him this key. Hmm. The security of the jewel case is my personal responsibility. Got it. So both Barnes and Dennis can access the key to the jewel storage room. But only Mr. Dennis has access to the key to the jewel case itself. That's valuable information, Mr. Dennis. Thank you. Really? I thought I might be getting in the way, but I'm glad to hear I could help. The Aurora Drop is meant to be a sim The Aurora Drop is meant to become a symbol of revival for Rhyme City. Anyway, I'm counting on you, Tim. A symbol of revival? Let's ask Dennis about that later. The thief cut open the case to steal the jewel, but they had the key to get into the storage room. And the only people who have access to that key are Dennis and Barnes, so it makes sense that the police would suspect Barnes. <clears throat> if the key hasn't been used to unlock the storage room, Barnes wouldn't, have been, wouldn't be under suspicion in the first place. Why would he do that knowing people would suspect him? Maybe he didn't think that far ahead. In any case, based on what we found at the scene of the crime, we can't be certain of anything just yet. We need to talk to Barnes and the other people in the mission to hear what they have to say. Not just the people, the Pokemon too. I'll interpret for you when we talk to them. Alright. I'm counting on you, Pikachu. Okay. Now that we've got our next steps figured out, let's start interviewing everyone right away. Interview the people and the Pokemon in the mansion. Oh, well, he's only got two floors. Whoa. Okay, can't go into his bedroom. Sad. There's no one else here besides the butler, though. Oh wow, there's more people. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Club Fable. All ears for mansion gossip. Babe. Oh, it's Cliff Fable. Miss Dennis's partner, apparently. Can I ask you a few questions? Babe. Whoa, what gives? No need to be so rude. What's wrong? Seems like she's real suspicious of us. Maybe she's feeling sensitive after the incident here. Jeez. Hey! She still looks awfully suspicious of us. Let's try again later. Yes? <laughs> you certainly don't look like you're with the police. State your business. Claudia Dennis, Sanjeev Dennis's wife. We're detectives. Mr. Dennis asked us to investigate the incident that occurred here. Detectives? Oh, I suppose my husband did say something about that. Your husband? That must mean you're... Claudia Dennis, Sanjeev's wife. I'm sorry to bother you, but do you mind if we ask you some questions? I do mind, actually. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. The case has already been solved. Well, what do you mean? The police said that Barnes is behind all of this. So the matter's settled. We've heard that he's under suspicion, yes. But we can't be certain it was Barnes who committed the crime. You sound just like my husband. But nothing, will but nothing you say will change the fact that Barnes is the culprit. Barnes' partner, Duckler, was up to no good. I saw it with my own eyes. Did you witness the crime? Barnes's partner, Duckler, was involved in the crime. You look as though you don't believe me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is it true that you witnessed the crime? Well, I didn't exactly see it clearly. Huh? But I did witness some irreparable proof. 
What exactly did you see? At the time of the incident, I was enjoying a cup of tea in my room on the second floor. Just then, I noticed a bird flop. Just then, I noticed a bird Pokemon flying outside by the window. A bird Pokemon? Yes, I clearly saw a blue bird Pokemon. It had to have had been Ducklet. <clears throat> we did find blue feathers near the window and in the storage room. So those were Ducklets. In hindsight, she was obviously stealing the jewel. I also heard a faint sound just before that, like something metallic. Metallic sound. Do you know what could have made that noise? No, I don't. But the storage room was ransacked, wasn't it? I suppose she must have broken something in the act. And I heard it was confirmed that Ducklet's feathers were found in the room. Isn't that proof enough that Barnes is the culprit? Hmm. So she's pretty darn convinced of her own theory. But it's all based on a metallic sound in the sight of a flying bird Pokemon. Pretty flimsy, if you ask me. Yeah. I'm sorry, Miss Dennis, but that information alone isn't enough to defini definitively prove Barnes is the culprit. Then hurry up and find whoever it is and get that jewel back. Isn't that what my husband hired you for? Huh. I get that she's upset, but she doesn't have to take it out on us. Excuse me. Mr. Dennis seems confident that Barnes is innocent. Oh yes, I'm sure he is. He's always been too trusting, especially when it comes to Barnes. Those two really trust each other that much. I've told Barnes has worked here for a very long time. Much longer, in fact, than I've known Sanjeev. I suppose that's why Barnes is always taking my husband's side. What do you mean by that? Whenever my husband and I have a disagreement, Barnes inevitably sides with Shanjeev, even though I'm sure he believes he's being impartial. That lack of self-awareness is yet another one of his many flaws. Did she frame the butler? I get the feeling Claudia is not a huge fan of Barnes. Do you think that's why she's so sure he's the thief? Excuse me? Could you tell me more about Ducklet? Ducklet is Barnes' partner. She dotes at him tirelessly and is always by his side. <clears throat> you mentioned earlier that she might be involved in the crime somehow. Would Ducklet be capable of such a thing? Yes. She even helps Barnes out with his shopping. She'd certainly be capable of making off with a jewel. Well, whether or not Ducklet stole the jewel, the one thing that seems certain is that she really loves Barnes. Oh, wait, I thought she was talking about the wife. <laughs> yes? The Aurora Drop is an incredibly valuable jewel. Mr. Dennis told me the same thing. But do you really understand? Can you even comprehend just how valuable it is? Huh? I knew it. Just look at those blank expressions. Hey, my face always looks like this. As it is, I'm not even sure my husband understands the true value of that jewel. After getting his hands on something so precious, why would he want to donate it to Rhyme City? Oh my god, she stole it. She is literally in her pocket. So, you're against donating the Aurora Drop? Of course I am! Treasure like that aren't meant to be paraded around for the general public. They should be preserved for quiet observation by the select few. Hmm. Hard to imagine her quietly doing anything. Hello there, Detective Tim. Oh, uh, I mean, Detective Goodman? Oop. Mm. Larry Turner, newest staff member of the Dennis residence. Wait. You are the detective, right? That's what Mr. Dennis said, at least. The name's- wait. That's not proper enough, sorry. My name is Larry Turner, and I'm a member of the house staff. House staff, huh? Seems in over his head. If you need anything, just let me know. I mean, please inform me if... You really don't have to be so formal with us. Thanks. That's a huge relief. I got this job a while ago, but I'm still not used to talking all fancy. Uh-oh. Is that a problem? Well, it's a good thing for me that Barnes deals with all the important guests. My main duties are taking care of the Pokemon, managing the house, and groundskeeping. And I can handle all that, no problem. 
I don't know. This guy isn't exactly filling me with confidence in his ability to do his job. Anyway, um, you wanted to ask about what happened, right? I mean, I already told the police everything I know. I'm really sorry for taking more of your time. Oh, sorry, that's not what I meant. I'm not complaining or anything. It's just that I don't remember what happened very well. Something attacked me out of nowhere and I blacked out. Something attacked him. So, not the thief, then. Can you please tell us more about that, Mr. Turner? Sure, no problem. <clears throat> right, so where to start? I was just doing my job like normal today. I'd made food for the Pokemon, did some cleaning around the mansion, that sort of thing. I think I was tidying the garden when it happened. I saw a ducklet fly out of a second story window. As I recall, I wondered where she was going. I mean, usually Ducklet just walks out the front door. It seemed weird to me, so I went upstairs to see what was going on. That's when I saw this door to the- That's when I saw the door to the jewel storage room was wide open. As if that wasn't shocking enough, the moment I went to look inside, it suddenly got punched by a Pokemon. The next thing I knew, I was lying on a sofa with somebody treating my wounds. A Pokemon punched you? Yeah. I feel like I glimpsed a small red figure for just a moment. Based on the size, it couldn't have been human, so I'm guessing it was a Pokemon. A red Pokemon. Do you know what kind it was? I'm really not sure. It all happened so fast. I see. I'm so sorry that happened to you. But I'm glad you weren't seriously hurt. <laughs> That's what the doctor said, too. No Pokemon would want to steal the Aurora Drop. It's possible that the culprit ordered their partner, Pokemon, to swipe the jewel and punch out Turner. So, Tim, now that you've heard Turner's story, what do you think? <coughs> we need to find the ducklet that flew out the window, and that red Pokemon, too. Yep, you got it. Excuse me. Did you see anything else when the Pokemon attacked you? The thief who brought the Pokemon along was probably nearby. Unfortunately, that's all I saw. I see. Can you think of any other details that might give us a clue about the culprit? Hmm. Nothing in particular is coming to mind. I mean, Mr. Dennis is such a nice person. I've never heard of anyone holding a grudge against him. And I was really surprised to hear that Barnes is a suspect. You don't think Barnes is responsible? I guess the police must have some reason to suspect him. But honestly, I just can't believe it. Barnes is still showing me the ropes around here. He's a great co-worker with tons of experience. I mean, if you know Barnes before all this, you could never even imagine him being a thief. Excuse me. Oops, oops. I accidentally reclicked. Excuse me. Do you know anything about the stolen jewel? The Aurora Drop, I've never even seen the thing. It's been shut up in that storage room ever since it was brought to the house. Of course, I know it's valuable and all. I assume this has been causing all the arguments between Mr. and Mrs. Dennis lately. What sort of arguments? In case you haven't heard, Mr. Dennis said he's going to donate the Aurora Drop. Seems like Miss Dennis is against that plan. They've been fighting about it almost nightly. Every night? It must really be a point of contention. I guess Mrs. Dennis just doesn't want to give up such a valuable jewel. Hmm. So the Aurora Drop's been driving a wedge between the husband and wife, huh? Hmm. The wife stole it. It has to be the wife. She's framing the butler because she hates the butler. <laughs> I see. I take it you've heard what Mr. Dennis has to say. I'm guessing he also told you about his butler. He's definitely not pleased that Barnes has fallen under suspicion. It sure seems that way. In my position, I'm not at liberty to share all the information we've gathered. But if there's anything else I can do to help, just let me know. Thank you. Yeah, but my dad? Um, Inspector Holiday, I know this has nothing to do with the current case, but... You want to ask me about Harry? Yes. Do the police have any new leads on my father's whereabouts? I'm sorry, Tim, but we haven't made any developments on that front. Oh. Well, thanks anyway. I still don't understand it myself. Harry was working on the art case when he went missing. So it stands to reason if you follow that thread, you'll find Harry too. But the, cl but the case has been closed and we still don't have a single clue. Seriously, where did Harry disappear to? 
Don't be discouraged, Tim. Look at how far you've come in the two years since you moved to the city in search of your father. You've become such a great detective in the mayor that the mayor even recognized himself. <laughs> you've become such a great detective that the mayor himself recognized you with an award. You'll find Harry, I'm sure of it. And in the meantime, I'll keep offering whatever help I can. Yeah, you're right. Thanks, to Inspector Holiday. Yeah, no nothing new in here. Hmm. <clears throat> Ask me anything you'd like. What makes the Aurora Drop a symbol of revival? Two years ago during the R incident, my jewel shop suffered considerable damage. Wait, you were a victim of the R incident? Yes, some Pokemon who've been exposed to R went berserk. Their rampage destroyed my shop, and to say nothing of the damage done to my jewels and the other goods. By that time, I already had the Aurora Drop. I kept it stored safely in the shop. So, was the Aurora Drop damaged too? No, as a matter of fact, it wasn't. Of all the jewels in my shop, the Aurora Drop was the only one to remain unscathed. In fact, debris fell so perfectly around the Aurora Drop that you might believe it's being protected. That's incredible. I guess there's some magic left in the world after all. <laughs> Ever since then, the Aurora Drop became known as the jewel that survived the R incident. People started visiting my shop just to see it. And thanks to all that attention, my business was able to get back on its feet. Sounds like a valuable jewel, in more ways than one. What made you decide to bring it back to your mansion instead of keeping it at your shop? I decided to donate it to Rhyme City. The Aurora Drop? But why donate something so precious to you? It's not just precious to me, and that's exactly why I've decided to donate it. Mayor Myers has done his part in Mayor Myers has done his part in improving our city by declaring the start of the Pokemon Friendship Week. I thought it was about time I did mine. So I wanted to donate the jewel that survived the arts incident as a symbol of Rhyme City's revival. I hope that by doing so I can help liven up not just my shop, but the whole city as well. Wow, Dennis, I'm impressed. That's a wonderful gesture. I'm glad you think so. Not everyone is so pleased about it. Oh? Ah, forget I said anything. I shouldn't have burdened you with concern over such personal matters. For now, I'm counting on you to find the Aurora Drop as quickly as possible. Understood. We'll do everything we can. Police officer. Now then, Mr. Barnes, well, thank you not to leave the mansion until further notice. Understood. Hey, it sounds like the police finished questioning Barnes. Let's go talk to him. Yeah. <coughs> Brandon Barnes, butler of the Dennis residence. <sighs> How did it come to this? Why are the police so suspicious of me? Excuse me, are you Mr. Barnes? Hmm, who might you be? I'm Detective Tim Goodman. Mr. Dennis has hired me to investigate the crime that occurred here. Is that so? Oh, my apologies, I am Brandon Barnes. I work here at the Dennis residence as a butler. Do you mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. Barnes? I realize you must be tired since you were just questioned by the police. Please don't worry about that. If you've been hired by Mr. Dennis, then it is my duty to give you my full cooperation. Thank you. What would you like to speak about first? Yes. I was away when the incident occurred. It wasn't until after I'd finished my errand and entered the house that I realized something was amiss. I heard Turner cry out from the second floor. When I rushed upstairs, I found it collapsed on the floor in front of the jewel storage room. So, that means Barnes was the first witness to arrive at the scene of the crime. <laughs> at the scene of the crime. <laughs> Did you see the thief or their partner Pokemon? No, nothing like that. Wait. If Barnes ran up the stairs, you'd think he would have run straight into the thief. If he didn't see anyone, could they have escaped from the second floor? Did you check the storage room? Yes, the door was already open. 
and when I looked inside, I saw that the aurora drop was gone. I then contacted Mr. Dennis and the police right away. Is there anyone who can corroborate your whereabouts at the time? Unfortunately not. I was only af it was only afterward when Mrs. Dennis came out of her room to see what the commotion was about. And the only others in the house at the time were Growlithe and Clefable. Naturally, no one could take witness statements from Pokemon, so I'm afraid I have a no alibi. That's where we come in. The Pokemon that live in this mansion might know something. Mr. Barnes, do you have any idea who the thief might be? Not a clue, I'm afraid. But I do know that Mr. Dennis and I are the only ones who can freely use the key to the jewel storage room. Geraldith guards that key with constant vigilance, so I imagine it would be very difficult for anyone else to take it from her. I suppose it's no great wonder that the police suspect me, given the circumstances. But I would never do something so senseless. At least this confirms that only those two have access to the key. Yes. Ducklet is my dearest partner Pokemon. Just look at this photo. That's Ducklet with you there? Yes, isn't she adorable? Just look at her feathers. Simply beautiful. But that's not all. She's also incredibly clever and even helps me out with my work. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. I'm terribly sorry. I, send I tend to get a bit carried away when I speak about Ducklet. It's really no problem. You mentioned that she helps you with your work. What exactly does she do? Let's see. She runs errands for me, such as buying coffee beans from a local cafe. Oh, she buys coffee beans. Nice. There's a place nearby called the Hi-Hi Cafe. Perhaps you've heard of it. She regularly goes shopping there by herself. <clears throat> if that's their go-to cafe, then it's gotta be the Hi-Hi Blend. Guess I shouldn't be surprised the Rhyme City's elites have such refined tastes. I asked her to go to the cafe today, in fact, but she hasn't yet returned. Could she have wandered off somewhere? Do you have any idea where Ducklet might be? Unfortunately, no. The feathers found at the scene of the crime are Ducklets, right? Yes, no question about it. But I haven't the faintest idea why Ducklet's feathers would be there. Just the thought of her getting caught up in the crime somehow, I'm so worried I can hardly think straight. Out of all the jewels in Mr. Dennis's collection, he considers the Aurora Drop to be his most precious. He worked tirelessly to acquire it in the first place. You might even say the Aurora Drop is the physical manifestation, the crystallization of Mr. Dennis's career as a jeweler. I wish nothing but swift retribution of the theft of the thief who stole it from him. For someone who speaks so formally, Barnes is a pretty passionate guy, isn't he? Please, Tim, find the Aurora Drop, I beg you. Don't worry, sir. We're on the case. Well... Based on Barnes' testimony, I'm not really surprised the police suspect him. Yeah. If only there were another witness, at least. About that. Aren't you forgetting something, Tim? Huh? Barnes told us that Growlithe and Clefable were in the mansion at the time of the incident, remember? Oh, right. Maybe the Pokemon saw something. Exactly. You can leave the rest to me. Let's go question them, Tim. 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 Wait, who said my name? Tim. Tim. Oh, wait, it's Pikachu. <laughs> I will also say Chatter's names if you subscribe. Because we are two hours in the stream, so it's time for me to run some ads. You can avoid that ad by subscribing. For $4.99 is $5. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe. See if you have a Prime sub available. Easy. I'm going to use the restroom real quick.
go. For some reason, like my throat feels fine, but my nose feels felt stuffy for like the last 20 minutes. So I, in my head, I sound nasally. But I'm sure I sound fine, like on mic. It's like messing with my head. I think I'll keep playing until we beat this story mission. Because just looking at um, how the game is going so far, <coughs> I assume we're going to be working on finding our dad in the background. But there's probably going to be maybe 10 main missions that we have to do. And every mission, I bet, is going to be like an hour or two or three hours a game. Granted, since I'm like audibly speaking, it's going to take longer than like if you're just playing on your own. Okay, back to it. What do you want, Pikachu? You know, Tim, we're really living the good life at our apartment. Yes, sir. A huge mansion like this must be a pain to clean. Yeah, for real. I want to talk to Growlithe first. Hey, Growlithe. Sorry to bug you when you're already feeling down, but it'll be alright if we asked you some questions. Growl. We're here to catch the thief. And we need your help to do that. Growl. You really need to talk to us if we help Sanji? Thanks. Sanji? Growlithe's nickname for Dennis, near as I can tell. Oh, right. His full name is Sanji Dennis, so I guess Sanji makes sense. Anyway, Growlithe, can we start with the questions? Growl. Gotcha. As Dennis's partner, it's your job to guard the mansion. And we already know the key to the jewel storage room was around your neck. Growl. It's important to Dennis, so guarding it is important to you. Makes sense. Go, go. <clears throat> she said she'd never let anyone other than Dennis or Barnes even touch the key. Go. So that's why you feel extra responsible for what happened, huh? She's really got a strong sense of responsibility. Don't worry, the two of us are going to crack this case. Well... Do you remember anything about the time of the incident? Go. You don't know because you are napping. Yeah. What? Your breakfast was so tasty that you ate too much and it made you sleepy. <laughs> Been there. Believe me. What are you even talking about? Gal, yeah, gal. You woke up when Barnes got home? That would have been right before all the commotion happened. But when you woke up, your precious key was gone. Growl. Yeah, I can tell you're upset. Yeah. You'll do whatever it takes to help us catch the thief? Thanks. We'll come ask for an assist if anything comes up. Okay, my new deduction. The wife poisoned Growlithe with extra treats. Made Growlithe go to deep sleep. The wife took the key from the around Growlithe's neck. She opened the door. And she was going to cop the jewel. I don't know what Pokemon she has would be able to cut the glass. But. Her Pokemon cuts the glass. Ducklet sheep up trying to steal the jewel. And then Ducklet and the Pokemon fight. They crash through the window. And the wife has Ducklet held hostage. Because that's the only alibi. Gow gow. She says Barnes is a kind and well-mannered person. He and Dennis are close, and she's never seen them fighting or arguing. Mr. Dennis really does seem to trust Barnes, after all. Gow, gow! And Growlithe likes Barnes, too. Judging from what Growlithe says, it's hard to think of Barnes as a likely culprit. There wasn't anything in Growlithe's testimony that could help us prove Barnes' innocence. Only one left to... Only one left to ask is Clefable. I'll do what I can to get Clefable talking to us. Thanks, Pikachu. <coughs> Check the bowl for poison! Faye? 
What? You think we're thieves returning to the scene of the crime? You've got it all wrong. We're not here to steal anything. We're actually great detectives looking to catch the thief. Please, can you answer some questions? Faye? Yes, really, come on, you can trust us. Faye, Faye? Yeah, help us out and I'm sure Claudia's bad mood will clear up too. Faye, Faye? So, you're willing to talk to us? Thanks. I guess Clefable was worried we'd do something bad to Mrs. Dennis. <clears throat> Do you have a job here at the mansion? Hey. Ah, uh, no job per se unless you count spending time with Claudia. Isn't it tough hanging out with someone so prickly? Hey. Claudia is not a bad person, you say. Sorry, didn't mean to be insulting. Hey, hey, hey. Uh huh. So Claudia is always arguing with someone or another. But when it's just you and her together, she starts to regret the whole thing. Ah, I get it now. Your job is to cheer her up when she gets into arguments. Wow, you're actually pretty nice. I bet Clefable is really important to Miss Dennis. Mm. Did anything strange happen today? Hey. Clefable is saying she got really sleepy while playing in the mansion this morning. Carbon monoxide poisoning. Everybody went crazy. Fei Fei. Then she dozed off and doesn't know what happened after that. <coughs> That's too bad. What do you think of Barnes? Do you get along with him alright? Fei Fei. Claudia doesn't like Barnes, so Clefable tries not tries not to have much to do with him. Fei. But she doesn't think Barnes is a bad person. After all, she says Barnes ran to help Turner when he got hurt. Wait, does that mean Clefable saw Barnes going upstairs to help Turner? Yeah, it's a god. Clefable, what else can you tell us? Hey, hey. Clefable was dozing at the front door this morning. When Barnes got home from doing stuff outside, she woke up and greeted him at the door. Hey, 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 hey. Then, Clefable and Barnes heard Turner cry out on the second floor, so they both went running upstairs. Ooh. So Barnes was not upstairs when it happened. And that's when, to their surprise, they found Turner on the floor. That means when Turner was attacked, Barnes was still on the first floor. Hmm. Okay, let's start deducing. Deducing time! Yes, sir. Okay, let's start deducing. Okay. All right. We've got some useful information. Let's stop for a moment and get our thoughts together. Based on everything we heard, is there anything that suggests Barnes is innocent? Let's review the information we gathered and see what we came up with. <clears throat> okay, option three. Barnes doesn't seem like he would betray Mr. Dennis. Would Barnes really betray Mr. Dennis? They've known each other a long time and Mr. Dennis trusts Barnes implicitly. Or, Barnes may be the culprit he had access to the key. Barnes is the only one aside from Mr. Dennis who had access to the jewel storage room key, so he must be the culprit. Finally, Barnes may not be the culprit. He returned to the mansion after the crime had occurred. When Barnes returned to the mansion, both he and Clefable heard Laurie Turner cry out, so it's highly unlikely Barnes committed the crime. Yep. Okay. We learned that Clefable greeted Barnes when he returned to the mansion, and Growlithe said she woke up at exactly the same time. Barnes and the others only became aware of the crime after that. Doesn't that mean Barnes couldn't be the culprit? Barnes was on the first floor when Turner was attacked. That would have made it very difficult for Barnes to steal the jewel. Hmm. I'm not really sure we can prove Barnes' innocence with that alone. Yeah, we can't exactly disclose that testimony came from Pokemon. No one would believe us. It looks like we're going to need other evidence to prove his innocence. <clears throat> Yeah, at least Barnes has an alibi now. We can't lift the suspicion on Barnes with Clefable's testimony alone. I think we're gonna need some other evidence to prove his innocence. But where should we look for it? Hmm. Nothing immediately comes to mind. At times like this, it's best to try investigating other leads. We might find a thread somewhere unexpected that would lead us back to this. 
To get close to the truth of the case, we've got no choice to find the Pokemon that Witness saw. Witnesses reported seeing a red Pokemon in Ducklet. I wonder if the Pokemon that cut up in the jewel case is the culprit's partner. It makes sense to think that, but no such human was seen by witnesses. Having said that, though, we must learn something if we can find the red Pokemon. Let's head into the city and get some leads on the red Pokemon. I'm sure we're able to find out what Pokemon it actually is. At this point, it seems pretty unlikely that Barnes is the culprit. But then, why did Ducklet leave from the second floor window? Seems unlikely that it's got nothing to do with the jewel theft. Finding Ducklet would be the quick quickest way to confirm that. Good call. Let's head into the city and look for her. Okay, that was a lot. A lot of lore. Okay. <coughs> Looks like the only way to continue our investigation is to gather info in the city. But where should we go? Sorry, Margaret. <laughs> I'm good now. Should we go after Ducklet or search for the red Pokemon? If you're unsure, why don't we try following Ducklet? I think we have a better lead to go on for, for that than the, for the red Pokemon. Oh, right. We did hear that Ducklet was supposed to buy coffee beans today. I'll bet you she went to the Hi Hat Cafe. You're right. We should probably go search the cafe. Let's not waste any time, Tim. Back to the cafe. <clears throat> Lily Pup's partner. Huh? You mean you won't help me? Police officer. I understand how you feel, ma'am, but we're in the middle of an investigation right now. Yes, but what should I do? Looks like that woman has a problem. Sure does. I doubt it has anything to do with our case, but it's hard not to want to help someone who's in trouble. That's the spirit, Tim. If if we see a person or a Pokemon with a problem, let's do what we can to help them. That's what makes us this city's great detectives. But we do need to prioritize our current case. This is something we can help with when we have time. Right. Let's first hear what she has to say. Good idea. <clears throat> Local concerns. During your investigation, people in the Pokemon may request you to help solving their problems. These people in the Pokemon have a blue speech bubble. If you see them, try talking to them. Local concerns that you've agreed to help with are added to a list. You can check this list anytime by pressing the Y button. Keep in mind, some of these requests aren't necessarily problems in the strictest sense. Side quest. <clears throat> Excuse me, may I ask what's wrong? My lily pup's gone missing! Oh no, what happened? We were taking a walk together in Serenity Park. I guess lily pup's been having too much fun. He got so worked up and he took off like a rocket. I've been searching all over for him and now I'm exhausted. That police officer won't look for it either. I don't know what to do. A cab. Police aren't here to help. They're here to protect capital. We can't just ignore this. That's right. Helping people is a detective's job. And finding lost Pokemon even more so. We'd like to help you, ma'am. We're detectives, so we're pretty good at looking for lost people in Pokemon. Really? That would be a huge help. Can you think of anywhere your Lulipop might have gone? Hmm. Well, I've already searched the park pretty thoroughly, but I haven't looked for him in the city yet. Oh, also, my Lulipop also likes quiet places. But I'm not sure there are any quiet places like that around here. I think that's enough information for us to go on. Please wait here while we search for him. I'm so sorry to add to your workload when you already look so busy, but thank you. I hope you find my sweet lily pup. If we see lily pup during our investigation, we should talk to it. <clears throat> Who whimsy? Cod, cod. They seem happy. What are they talking about? They're saying that no matter how many times they visit the city, it's always bustling and full of fun. Do you suppose they witnessed anything? We can certainly ask. <clears throat> I don't suppose they've seen Ducklet around, have they? Wim? 
whimsy. Whim whim. Okay, okay, I get it. You didn't see her. Whimsy. If they didn't see her, I wonder where she went. Hey. Have you two seen your red Pokemon around here? Cot cot. Oh. Ponyard is red, and you've recently become friends with one. Ponyard? <clears throat> it's a Pokemon with blades all over its body. And it's true that Pyronod's pretty red. Whimsy got caught. You often run into Ponycart at the terrace in Serenity Park. And on windy days, you play with Pyronod by picking it up and flying around. Whim. They said they like to fly Pyronod all the way here from Serenity Park. Serenity Park is the big park just beyond here, right? Yeah, and the terrace is way over that far side. Maybe we can find Pawn out here. Or there. Do you remember when you last played with Pawn out? Whim. Whimsy. Oh, lately you've been playing together every day. Even today? In that case, you might be able to find it there now. Whimsy. <clears throat> if we go to meet Pawn out, Pawnyard, we should be careful about how we treat its favorite rock. It has a favorite rock? Whimsy whim. Apparently there's a rock at the terrace that Pon Ponyard really cares about. One time they accidentally stepped on it and then Ponyard got mad. Real mad. Wow, that's scary. You better watch where we step. I think the Pokemon are playing. They crashed the window. Mm -hmm. Is this con yours? Whim whim. <clears throat> yeah, the whims got say it's theirs. We actually found this in Mr. Dennis's mansion. I don't suppose you've been in there. Whimsy. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Come on, you gotta remember at least that much. Whimsy. Oh, this one does remember. What did it say? It thinks it remembers going into the mansion while playing with his friends. It thinks so? That's not a very clear answer. Yeah, let's ask for more details. Hi, Keelan. Welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Hi, hon. Okay, I know I said I'd go until I beat this mission. But it's taking a while. <coughs> you said you might have been in the mansion, but how'd you get inside? Whim. Hmm. You went in through the window with your friends. Why would you do that? Whimsy. You don't remember any you don't remember anything after eating breakfast this morning. The heck does that mean? Please, it's really important. Just try to remember. Whim whimsy. Some human you don't know asked you to do it. What was this stranger like? Whim whimsy. You don't remember because it's someone you've never seen before, huh? Now look here. You might be an accessory to theft. Cut. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? You think the Whimsicott may have been unknowingly involved in the crime? If they were, they, they're blissfully ignorant to it. After all, playing pranks is kind of their whole deal. This complicates things. Oh, whim. Oh, you ride on seasonal winds that take you all over the world, huh? The city seems l even livelier than usual whenever the Whimsicott arrive. Oh, Whimsy! Ah, okay. Soon you'll be leaving the city to travel somewhere else. Whim! Oh, you like coming here every year because you can meet so many different Pokemon. Uh, I'm happy to hear that. <clears throat> Do you suppose Ponyard is the red Pokemon we're looking for? Apparently, it's good friends with the Whimsicott that went into the mansion, so it seems pretty likely. It'd probably just be fastest to go meet it and ask. Mm -hmm. But we still have to track down Ducklet. Should we look for Ducklet or Ponyard first? Either is fine by me. But you can start with whichever one you like. Thanks, Pikachu. Okay, red Pokemon, red Pokemon. Wait. The park is back that way. Cuckoo! 
Oh, if it isn't Pitto, I'm glad to see you're feeling better now. Cool. Who am I? What do you mean? I just rescued you a little while ago. Cool. It's forgotten the whole thing. Well, Pitto are known for their forgetfulness. Man, the wife is just poisoning everybody. Did something happen? Yeah. <clears throat> Is that the pot here? Watchog. Oh, Watchog. Self appointed Watchog. city patrol. A cab. <clears throat> what are you up to? Chog. Watchog's hobby is observing things around the city. In that case, maybe it's seeing something useful. Can't hurt to ask. Watch out. What? Really? Jog. What's it saying? You gotta tell me too. Right, sorry. It says I saw Ducklet pass by here. If she passed by here, she was probably on her way to the cafe after all. Jog. There are so many red Pokemon, you don't know which one we mean? Good point. Do we know anything else about it? Hmm. Let's see. We know it's a Pokemon that can use a move to slice clean through hard objects, and that could easily knock down a human with a punch. Watch out. You haven't seen any Pokemon like that around here? Alright then. Wait, we know it's a Ponyard! <clears throat> Pikachu's so dumb. Roger. Chog. Oh. You never get bored in this city because there are so many different people and Pokemon to watch. Must be fun having eyes like yours, especially since they let you see in the dark. Even the only new. Oh, wait, I can. Can I get a donut? Hmm. That sweet smell is irresistible. They must be using Combi's honey. Let's come back and try some after we're done with the case. No tweets? Okay, this is the only new Pokemon. Drub! Hey, wait up! <laughs> it's gone. Oh! It ran down this street, right? Let's follow it so we can ask some questions. I just hope we can find it. <coughs> huh? It's not here. Must be hiding somewhere. Well, no point hanging around here. Let's go to be someone else. Lillipop, did someone say walkies? Lil? Say, Pikachu, isn't this... Yeah, it's Lillipop. Oh, wait, they were looking for him. It may indeed be the partner of that woman we met in front of the dentist residence. Let's ask. Hey there, Lillipop. What are you doing way over there? Puff? Hmm, I see. Apparently he was having so much fun running around that he wasn't paying attention to where he was going. Next thing he knew, he was here. Just like that woman said earlier. Lil. He says he misses his partner. Okay, we're gonna go tell her and bring her here to you, Lillipop. Oh, easy. <clears throat> Lillipop, I'm so glad you've been found. Pop pop. Thank you so much for finding my dear Lillipop detective. You're welcome. I'm glad we could help. Lil? You ran away because you weren't getting enough playtime, didn't you? Lil? Alright then, we can play together as much as you like today. Pop pop. Guess that's settled. Yeah, it's nice to see them both so happy. One happy civilian. I don't get XP or anything? Damn. 
She should have at least given me like the hundred dollar reward to find her lost dog. Hearing Pikachu talk feels odd to you? I think it's funny. <coughs> like, Meowth was my favorite Pokemon in the anime because he could, like, talk and he was snarky and it was funny. Whew. We gotta find this red Pokemon quick. My throat is dying. Ooh, this person's new. Oh, side quest. I don't want to do that right now. Oh, I should still talk to them, though. Soccer boy. Oh, this is real bad. Mm -hmm. hmm. This boy looks pretty down. Sorry to bother you, but is everything okay? You look unhappy about something. Oh, you're the detective in the Pikachu I saw on TV. Awesome. A detective's just what I need. Can you tell us what's bothering you? Well, we've got a match coming up against the Tawny Park Soccer Club. Huh. I didn't know Taunty Park even had a soccer club. Well, one of their members has a scafty as their partner, and they're so good. So I'm worried we're going to lose. I want a partner Pokemon I can play with, too. But I can't find any Pokemon that's good at soccer. Gotcha. Sounds like we better search for a Pokemon with good footwork. Can you think of any Pokemon that can play soccer really well, Mr. Detective? Hmm. Not immediately spring to mind, but I'll be sure to tell you if I find one. Really? Thanks, Mr. Detective! I sure hope we can find a Pokemon that likes playing soccer. There's gotta be one somewhere in Rhyme City. Wow, that's... He's like, I just want a free Pokemon. Please, Detective, I want a free Pokemon. What a weird thing to ask. I know, but that kid looked like six years old. They don't know any better. <gasps> the Hi Hat Cafe. Oh, Tim. Rachel Myers, student at Rhyme University. Oh, we're in college. Hello okay, there. we're good. Jessica Miller, Rachel's friend. Wow, what a coincidence running into you here. Yeah, I'm surprised as you are. Hmm. I think I've seen this girl somewhere before. Oh, I remember Howard's notebook. She's the girl from the photo. Yes, Pikachu, this is Rachel. We go to college together. She's the mayor's daughter. Right, right. And you said she knows a lot about Pokemon too, didn't you? And she's just a classmate or... You know. See, this is why I don't like telling you about my personal life. I'm just looking out for you. I never... Hear you talk about anything. I'm just looking out for you. I never hear you talk about actually having fun with people. Oh, well. Anyway, who's the woman next to her? <clears throat> I know about as much as you do. I don't think we've met before. Hey, Jessica, have you heard of these? Of course, it's an honor to meet the great detectives. By the way, Tim, were you talking to Pikachu just now? What? No way. Ah, uh, no need to be embarrassed. I totally understand the urge to talk to your partner. But now that you're here, why don't you chat with us for a bit? Um, yeah. Sure. You and Pikachu must be working hard, huh? Very hard. Yeah, he's actually more helpful than he looks. <laughs> That's pretty impressive, Pikachu. He's the best wingman. <clears throat> Come on, Tim. You can give me a better compliment than that. You seem different from usual somehow. Don't tell me that award my dad gave you has already started to change you. No, of course not. I'm the same as I've always been. Are you sure? I mean, we don't really know each other all that well. Maybe you have the wrong impression of me? No way, I've had my eye on you for a while now, Tim. Excuse me? Oh, does she mean what I think she means? It's like I have a front row seat to the great detective in action. It feels like an exciting new adventure could break out at any moment. Oh, right. 
Did you get your hopes up there for a moment, Tim? Quite, you. <laughs> it is such an honor to meet you, Tim. Oh my gosh, she's a fan. Thank you for solving the R case. You have no idea what that meant to me. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I see news about your accomplishments on TV all the time. You're quite the celebrity. Celebrity? I wouldn't quite go that far. No need to be modest. You're a great detective, after all. Jessica used to work with my mother years ago. That's how we met, and we've become friends ever since. Oh, I see. But it's been a while since we've met up like this. About two years, I think? We've both been so busy lately. There just hasn't been time to get together. I had no idea you become friends with a famous great detective. Who are you surprised? <laughs> yes, of course. Hey, I'm the great detective. <clears throat> By the way, Tim, I work at a pizza really I work at a pizzeria in Bamboo Borough. If you're ever in the area, stop by. I'll treat you to one of the I'll treat you to one of our awesome pizzas. Alright. <laughs> Did you hear that, Tim? Let's go sometime. The pizza place where Jessica works is actually pretty famous. Sounds great. I'd love to go. I'll take you up on that offer. I'll be waiting. Tim, there's actually something I wanted to talk to you about. What's up? Well, it's about something going on at home. Sounds serious. I'm not sure how much help I'll be, but you can always talk to me. I don't want to waste your time, though. Don't worry about it. I'm working right now, but we can meet up tonight if you're free. Sure, that works. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Okay, then how about you stop by my apartment later this evening? Hey, not bad, Tim. But aren't we supposed to have dinner with your family tonight? Yeah, but this sounds serious. I can't just brush her off. The least I can do is hear her out for a little bit. Fair enough. I'm sure your family will understand. Tim, Tim. What do you want, Pikachu? Hey, Tim. Jessica seems really grateful to us for solving the art. I think Jessica likes us. Ago. Nice to know our hard work wasn't for nothing. Oh, that was cute. <coughs> Ooh, a contrabass. Now that's stylish. I think I'll give it a strum. Stop it. The cafe's open right now, you know. Let me see. Wow, what a great looking drum set. I think I'll take it for a whirl. Please don't, the cafe's open now. Hmm. It's Pablo's piano. I doubt he has much time to play it when the cafe's busy. Well? This instrument is called a conga. Did you know that? You tap out the beat with both hands. Even I can play this thing. Come on, now's not really the time for that. Dude, Tim is such a buzzkill. Records and sheet music? This is Pablo's collection. He's got everything from old classics to the newest hits. He must have a broad taste in music. Oh. oh. Looks like Pablo's got some new coffee beans. Maybe then I'll come back by myself to try them out. Which means I'll be paying your tab as always, so don't go overboard, okay? You know who could go overboard? The new followers, because guys, we are another 30 minutes in the stream, so if we're new here, follow. You get cool emotes, and you get to type in chat. Wow. Can we hit our daily goal, guys? And if you're already following, make sure you have notifications turned on. That way you don't miss a single stream. <clears throat> well, look who it is. Pablo Milan, owner of the Hi Hat Cafe. Ludicolo, cheerful cafe assistant manager. Hi, Tim. Did something happen today? I noticed you weren't here for this morning. 
Yeah, I got caught up in a new case. Oh, sounds rough. You mind if I ask you some questions? Me? Sure, go right ahead. Excuse me. You must have been really busy moving your cafe to this new location. Do you feel all settled in now? Yeah, it feels like things are finally back to normal. I know Pikachu's have been coming here on his own to drink your coffee. I hope he hasn't been causing you any trouble. Trouble? Me! I'm a paying customer. Once you pick up my tab. <laughs> Not at all. The cafe's way closer to your place now. And it seems like Pikachu feels comfortable here. And the Hi Hat Cafe always welcomes Pokemon customers. Hey. The butler from the dentist mansion? Yeah. He swings by the cafe pretty often after he's done with work. Barnes is a regular customer? Yeah, he loves coffee and jazz, so we got plenty to talk about. But apparently he's been really stressed lately, so he hasn't been stopping by as much. He's been really stressed, huh? You should probably ask for more details about that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Do you know why Barnes was stressed? Was he worried about something? Oh, um, well... I'm not sure it's my place to tell you about a customer's personal manners. Please, we're just trying to help. It's for Barnes's sake. Ah, so this is for the case, huh? Then I guess I'd better tell you. He was worried about the jewel that Mr. Dennis was planning to donate to Rhyme City. Apparently the Dennis's had a difference of opinion about that. Barnes was trying to come up with a compromise that would satisfy both of them. But he said he just got wound up getting stuck in the middle of the argument. That does sound stressful. I remember him saying that he wished there was no jewel in the first place. He wished there was no jewel, huh? Anyway, that's all I know. I hope it helps. Yes, thank you. Excuse me? Do you know that ducklet that lives at the dentist residence? Yeah, I know her. You're talking about Barnes' partner, right? She often comes here all on her own to buy some coffee beans. She really is a clever little Pokemon. Just like Barnes has said. She always comes with this cute little bag that I fill with beans for her. As far as I know, she takes them straight back to the mansion. In fact, she left with her usual order a couple minutes ago. Really? Hmm. Okay, let's start deducing. I'm gonna interview these two Pokemon first. Millicery, rich with flavor and fortune. Mill, mill. Oh, it's Millsery. Hey, Pablo, got a new customer? Oh, you mean this Millsery? It's new. Just started living here, in fact. Wonder what sort of place it's from. Mill, mill. Whoa, hey, hold on, Millsery. Both Tim and Pikachu have particular blends they prefer. You can't just add cream without asking. Mill, mill, mill. I'd prefer to keep my coffee black. Well, why don't you try some cream, Tim? Sure. And it smells great. I'll give it a try next time. Mill, mill, mill. Okay, let's start deducing. Luda. Uh, Lula Dee. Looks like she's in a good mood as always. Do you think she might know something? She might. We can ask. <coughs> Luda. Uh, Lula Dee. You say you've got an ear for rock now, not just jazz. Hello, Apparently, a polytoad and its friends put on a concert here at night. Hello, And you really love that music. So that's how you went from Jezet to Rocker. I'd love to hear a polytoad's concert sometime. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Duckla recently? Hello, She says she's out. She says she's out Duckla come to the cafe pretty often. Pablo knows more about that, apparently. Hello, Oh, and you sometimes see Ducklet at Serenity Park? Hello, I see. So the pond water there is good for your fur. And you make Ducklet there sometimes when you go to bathe. How nice that you tell each other about good swimming spots. I guess water type Pokemon get along swimmingly with each other. <laughs> so stupid. Begin deducing. Did you figure out where Ducklet went after she left the mansion? Let's piece together the information we've gathered.
Okay. She's actually still at the residence. It only looks like Ducklet isn't at the mansion. She's actually been with her partner, Barnes, the whole time. No. We literally saw Barnes earlier. Or she went to the Hi-Hat Cafe. The most likely reason Ducklet isn't at the mansion is because she went down to buy coffee beans from the Hi-Hat Cafe. Yep. Okay. Didn't Ducklet go to the Hi-Hat Cafe to buy coffee beans? Yeah. Apparently she goes there on a regular basis to buy them. Today was one of those days. And Pablo said he had to Ducklet her usual order of coffee beans. So, I guess Ducklet headed back to the mansion then. She might be back there already. Is there something that can prove Barnes' innocence? Let's think of something that will be convincing to the police as well. By showing that Barnes' partner, Ducklet, has nothing to do with the crime. Ducklet only went out to go shopping. That means her partner, Barnes, luckily had nothing to do with the crime. Or, by showing that Barnes could not open the jewel case. Mr. Dennis is the only one who can unlock the jewel case, so it would have been impossible for Barnes to steal the jewel. I guess showing the partner. That could help. Oh! <laughs> Duck literally went out shopping. She didn't go running off with the stolen jewel. That means Barnes has no connection to the crime. Hold on. Even if Barnes' partner is innocent, that doesn't prove he is. I think we're gonna need a different approach. Hmm. I don't think we have enough information yet. It's really important that we get this right. Let's take our time with it. Is there something else that can prove Barnes' innocence? Let's think of something that would be convincing to the police as well. Let's try the other one. <laughs> Barnes had no way of unlocking the jewel case. Maybe we can just use that fact to prove his innocence. It's true that Dennis is the only person who had the key to the jewel case, but the culprit cut open the case and stole the jewel. So the fact that Barnes couldn't unlock it doesn't really matter, does it? Whoa. Hmm. I don't think we have enough information yet. It's really important that we get this right. Let's take our time with it. Okay. Okay, so... You can deduce throughout the story, I guess. But I guess you should only really deduce whenever Pikachu tells you to. That means you have all the pieces. Okay. Let's head back to the mansion to search for Ducklet. Good idea. What in the world were you doing? My apologies, sir. Did something happen, Brad? Ducklet was spotted near the mansion just now. But when my subordinates tried to catch her, they let her escape. Oh, so Ducklet had just gotten back to the mansion. Do you know where she ran off to? Unfortunately, I do not. And I don't have the resources to keep searching. At this point, I'll have to call in the services of the Pokemon Protection Bureau. You. Tell the inspector that I'm heading back to the station for a moment. Yes, sir. <coughs> well, Brad and Minectric are gone. But still, we have no idea where Ducklet could have run off to. Where would we even start looking? Well... Well, now what? Should we put the search for Ducklet on hold and look for the red Pokemon instead? Yeah, sure. That's better than just spinning our wheels. There are still places we haven't looked. Let's check them out. Oh, okay.
Okay, I didn't... Okay, Serenity Park. It was here the whole time. Okay, this is where the red Pokemon likes to hang out. This place is huge. Hmm. That's Serenity Park for you. Whimsicott says Ponyard hangs out around here. And the terrace is their usual meetup spot. Shall we look? Oh. It's a map of Serenity Park. This park's huge. The terrace is all the way on the other side. Aw, oh, come on. Look at them stopped again. She keeps getting distracted. The Lickitung licked every flavor life has to offer. Holy. Uh, lick lick. What a long tongue. <laughs> okay. Nice. <clears throat> Rimombi, have some pollen puffs. Oh, look. The Rimbombi. Rimbombi mixed pollen and nectar to make all kinds of different puffs. Mm, boom, boom. I'm sure it seems busy. Bom, bom. Apparently, it's making pollen puffs for us cute fly to eat. Those little bugs have big appetites while they're growing up, so it's got to prepare a ton of food. Sounds like a lot of work. Let's just watch and try not to get in the way. Oop. You there. Wait. You wouldn't happen to be that great detective duo, would you? Charles Merla, scientist. I am such a huge fan of yours. <laughs> oh dear, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Charles Murloc. I'm a scientist working here in Rhyme City to deepen our understanding of Pokemon. Scientist, huh? What's that? You'd like to hear more about what I do? Actually, I... My research has been recognized by Mayor Myers himself. Now I'm helping out with a new policy that he and the city council are working on. You might see him the brains behind Rhyme City's latest policies. This guy is intense. And he seems like the type who doesn't even listen to what others are saying. If you two great detectives have any questions for me, by all means, fire away. After all, I have something in common with you both. We're all working to help Rhyme City. We're all coming from the same place, comrades with the same goals. So I'm prepared to answer any questions you have. Um, thank you. Guess our only cho <clears throat> Guess our only choice is to play around for a bit. What a drag. Excuse me. What exactly do you help the mayor with police policy development? My domain is silence, not politics. I can't actually propose new legislation. What I can do though is develop new machines and equipment. I also help distribute them to the people in Pokemon of Rhyme City. I'm proud to contribute to my city with the power of science. That's wonderful. It isn't it? Mayor Myers came up with the idea for a bill to help people in Pokemon coexist, so I feel duty bound to use my position as a scientist to support it. Sounds like he's warming up for a speech. I can tell how passionate you are about improving the city. Excuse me? What sort of research are you doing, Mr. Murloc? My research explores the nature of communication between people and Pokemon. Sounds complicated. No, it's quite simple, really. We're just trying to help Pokemon understand human language. Imagine what they do for Rem City. It'd make life here so much more entertaining and simple. A whole city where Pokemon and people can go back and forth like we can, huh? That really would make Rhyme City an even better place. Don't you think? Oh, can I ask you a favor, Pikachu? Signature. Would you allow me to give you a quick health exam? Ow! Hey, what'd you just do to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, is Pikachu upset with me? I only plucked a bit of fur, and the test results should be ready in just a moment. What exactly are you doing? This is a machine I created at Mayor Meyer's request. It can measure a Pokemon's vital signs in record time. In other words, it's made to quickly check a Pokemon's health. I'd say that's a good thing for both people and their partners, wouldn't you? Yeah, it sure sounds like it. Way to bury the lead. <clears throat> okay, it's ready. Now let's see. 
Hmm? What's it say? It's detecting caffeine? Did someone say caffeine? Seeing as he's working as a detective, I figured this was no ordinary Pokemon. But these results are truly fascinating. Um, hello? Mr. Murloc? Oh, do forgive me, he's quite alright, no problems at all. I suppose his triglycerides are a bit high for a Pokemon. My what? He does seem slightly different from a regular Pokemon Pikachu, though. Huh. Is there something weird about me? Well, now that you've finished your checkup, I think we better get going. Ah, oh, yes, sorry to have taken so much of your time. Good luck, great detectives. Thank you. Come on, Pikachu, stop soaking and let's go. I try glycerides. Ugh. office worker. Someone seems to have planted a tree right in the middle of the path. It's such an inconvenience. Dude, people are so stupid. <laughs> Hi, hacker. Welcome in. Can we get some yos? Hello. Yeah, Pokemon stream real. I'm finally playing a Pokemon game. Isn't it crazy? Raboot. Raboot. Score a hat trick. Oh my god, the kid wants a soccer player. We found him. Oh, it's a Raboot. What are you up to? Raboot. You're just about to do some dribbling practice here by yourself? Dribbling practice? Yeah. Raboot are really good at that kind of footwork. They're always practicing. In that case, Raboot might be willing to join some soccer games. You're right. And this one says it's got some really impressive technique. Hey, Raboot. I know a kid that loved to kick a ball around with you. If you got some time, would you be willing to play with him? Rabu! You will? Great. That's great. I'll go get him. Okay, I do really like how they just play the cutscene. Like, I don't have to physically go back and, like, bring the Pokemon with me. I love that. Uh, rab Those eyes! They- they look really fired up! This Pokemon is the coolest, Mr. Detective! Try talking to it. I'm sure it'll be willing to practice with you. Really? Hey, Rabu, wanna play soccer with me? Rabu? Rab? Rabu? It's knotted! Thank you, Raboot! Okay, let's get this practice started. We're gonna win the match for sure now! Good luck. Hope you do well. Thanks! I hope we can be friends, Raboot! Rab Rab! <laughs> I guess soccer players don't really need words to hit it off with when they share a love of the game. Yeah. Even while I was... Yeah. Even without speaking the same language, they seem to understand each other's feelings. Yes! Another happy civilian! Oh, pseudo what -o. <laughs> Unmoving as a tree. Oh, what -o. Whoa. I was just thinking that this was an odd place for a tree, but it's actually a Pokemon? Yeah, that's a pseudo -wudo. They have a habit of pretending to be trees. Pseudo, pseudo! You're practicing your tree imitation, huh? Does it have to practice right here? Seems like it'll be- Seems like it'll block a lot of foot traffic. Yeah, true. Hey, pseudo -wudo, if you want to practice, you should try it somewhere else. This location totally blows your cover. Pseudo! Pudo. That sure seemed to send it into a panic. I guess it thought it was blending in perfectly. So dumb. Apparently on. Adorable deceiver. Just like me. Per per per. This Pokemon is being awfully friendly. Is the catch on Arismia? Be honest. <clears throat> Serena's partner. This is a fountain for Pokemon to drink from. My Serena really loves the water here. Huh. 
Huh? Someone must have replanted that tree in the flower bed. But when? <laughs> They'll never find me now. Oh, I can't talk to the pseudo widow anymore. Sad. Pikachu, catch up. Gotta get your steps in. Careful not to get lost again, okay? <laughs> Bullings. Lockstep formation. Lynx. Lee. There's sure a lot of amazing Pokemon around. These ones are so well coordinated. The Terrace. Uh, this is the top, yeah? <laughs> Look at that, Pikachu. Huh? From here, you have a perfect view of the dentist residence. Hmm. Hey, Tim. What are you thinking? I'm pretty sure that window's the one in front of the jewel storage room. A Pokemon capable of flying can go straight into the mansion from here. Yeah. If our thief was getting help from a Pokemon, this would be the perfect vantage point. This is where the Whimsicott usually meet up with pa Poniard, right? That's what they said, but I don't see it anywhere. If it was here earlier, maybe he left some kind of sign. Well, Poniard are known for their blades. It's not much, but it's the only lead we've got. We better get looking. These torn up leaves have rough, uneven edges. Do you suppose Ponyard did this? Hmm. They look to me like they were bitten, not cut. Hmm. This cotton. It probably fell here when the Whimsicott were playing with Ponyard. What's up with this rock? It's covered in gashes. Has something been scratching at it? These gashes look like they were left by something sharp, like a blade. Hmm. I doubt a human would be strong enough to make clean cuts like these. Hmm, I wonder. Peace, I too, hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. No other clues here. But you know what is here? <laughs> An ad. Because yeah, guys... Start it's time to deduce something. But okay, before we deduce... Start oh, shut up, Pikachu. <laughs> we have to run some ads. You can avoid that ad by subscribing for $4.99. Just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing almost on or... You can link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe. See if you have a Prime sub available. Get some water, get a snack. I will see some of you guys in a few. Let's get to deducing. Did you figure out where the red Pokemon is? Search for the Pokemon that ate the leaves. It's possible that the torn leaves with rough, uneven edges were left by Ponyard, who was eating them. Ponyard must be near the leaves. No. Search near the rock. It's highly likely that the slash marks left in the rocks were made by Ponyard. That's proof that Ponyard came to the tenor terrace. Or, search where the Whimsicott flew to. Ponyard and Whimsicott apparently played together often. 
Since they flew to the dentist residence together, we haven't been able to find Ponyard if we search inside the mansion. That makes the most sense. What? <clears throat> Ponyard and Whimsicott were played together, right? If we search where they flew off together, maybe we'll find Ponyard there. And where exactly did they fly off to? To the dentist residence? Exactly. We're not going to find Ponyard there. Even if we search the place from top to bottom. Okay. It's got to be the rock. Okay. We did find a rock that was covered in slashes, as if it was being cut up by sharp blades. Maybe those slashes were made by Ponyard. That's definitely the rock that the Whimsicott were talking about. So, if we go where the rock is, we might find Ponyard there. Alright, let's take a look around that rock. That was, like, too easy. Like, too simple. Can you think of any way to draw Ponyard here? Wait next to the rock. Why don't we just try waiting for a while to see if it shows up? A good old-fashioned stake out, huh? I hope it doesn't turn out to be a waste of time. No, surely it'll come back. <clears throat> hey, Tim. How long do we gotta wait? It sure doesn't seem to be coming. It's not gonna show up just because we were waiting for it. At this rate, we'll be here till sundown. Don't say that. We'll we came up with this plan together, remember? Hmm. This isn't working. We better try a better angle. Let's sing near the rock. Um... I guess you could try singing around the rock. A song? Good idea. Guess it's time for me to show off my golden pipes. Huh. And a one. And a two. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. Nah, I'm just getting to the good part. It'll come running for an autograph any second. I don't think it's gonna happen, Pikachu. Huh. That's strange, I wonder why. My singing is so good. Guess Ponyard doesn't have any ear for true art. Hmm. This isn't working. We better try another angle. Oh. <clears throat> oh yeah, they did say that earlier. <laughs> when the god said that Ponyard get angry when they step on the rock. Oh yeah, you're right. Good memory. Maybe Ponyard will show up if one of us climbs on it. Worth a shot. Let's give it a try. How's this? I just hope it actually here to see this. Pawn? What? Ponyard. Impressive swordplay. It's Ponyard. Just like Whimsicott said. Pawn, pa pawn. Okay, it's saying, Darest thou tread upon my cherished rock? What is the meaning of this? Thine shall answer... Th thine answer shall determine thy fate. I will show thee no mercy. Wait, what? Wow, it's really angry. Sorry, we just wanted to find you. We weren't trying to mess with your rock or anything. Pa. Phew, thank goodness. It said it'll forgive us, but just this once. Pawn. You want to know why we're looking for you? Fair enough. We've got some questions we'd like to ask you. Would you mind talking with us for a bit? Huh. It says it'll talk. <coughs> we heard from some Winsicott that they went to the Mr. Dennis's mansion. Were you the one who went with them there? Huh. Ponyard's not sure if it was the same place, but it vaguely remembers going to a big house. Huh. It says it entered the house together with the Winsicott. How did you get inside the mansion? Apparently, Ponyard likes to get picked up and flown around by Whimsicott. So you think you might have gotten inside the mansion that way? Did you happen to cut a jewel case when you were in the mansion? Pawn. So you can remember the sensation of cutting through something, but the rest is a blur. This is important, so please try to remember. Pawn. It says its mind feels all foggy, and it just can't remember what's going on at that time. That sure makes things difficult. Pawn. 
Have you seen Ducklet around anywhere? Huh. It hasn't seen her. Great. Where could Ducklet have gone? So you've been traveling all over as part of your journey to warriorhood. I'm sorry, did you say journey to warriorhood? Apparently it travels all over the place to practice and improve its moves. Pop. It says that because it was born with these blades, it wishes nothing more than to master them. If Ponyard is proud of its blade, I bet they have razor sharp edges. Huh. It says it can easily slice a rock in two. That might sound a bit strange, but you haven't um, punched anyone recently, have you? Pawn. Ponyard says it's never punched a single person or Pokemon in its life. Pawn. Good point. You could get something with those hands of yours, but you definitely couldn't punch it. Yeah, on second thought, you'd wind up with a different injury if you were punched by a Ponyard. Are there any other Ponyard in the city besides you? Pawn. What's it saying? Apparently, it's never seen any other Ponyard. We finally managed to find Ponyard, but we weren't able to learn anything useful from it. Yeah, and some of what, and some of what it even, yeah, and some of what it said even contradicted testimony we gathered earlier. Maybe we can get some information if we have proof that Ponyard entered the mansion. Pon, it's asking if we're done here so we can get back to training. What sort of training does it do? Huh. It's planning on cutting rocks and things to sharpen its skills and blades. Cut rocks? Wow. Would it be willing to demonstrate for us? Ooh, good idea. It would be a big help to see what a cut from a Ponyard looks like. Huh. Yeah, it says it would happily grace us with a demonstration. Thank you. We'll watch quietly so you can focus. <laughs> awesome. Sugoi! Oh. Huh. That clean slice and the metallic sound. Ponyard's blade made when it made contact. It all matches with what we know of the crime scene. That means the Pokemon that entered the mansion must have been Ponyard. But neither Whimsicott nor Ponyard remembers clearly. What's up with that? I can't imagine that the Pokemon are lying. Their behavior was pretty unusual, but there must be a good reason for it. We've looked all over the place, but we haven't seen Ducklet anywhere. Apparently she almost got caught earlier, but then ran away. So maybe she's hiding somewhere. Then how are we going to find her? <clears throat> we couldn't get much useful information from Ponyard. I think Ducklet is our only good lead now. I guess we need to keep asking around then. I don't know. Maybe she got scared and went into hiding. If she did, it'd be really hard to... If she did, it'd be really hard for just the two of us to find her. Yeah. How should we look for her, then? Good question. How about we ask a Pokemon to help us? Pokemon? Yeah. Pokemon have all sorts of special skills. Maybe there's a Pokemon that can help us find Ducklet. Do you think it'd be willing to help us, though? I'm sure one of the Pokemon in the dentist residence will be gladly help us out. After all, the theft happened in their own home. Good point. Let's go back to the mansion and ask the Pokemon there to help. Okay, new deduction. Tip. What do you want, Pikachu? <laughs> Ikimari, welcome Tip. in. Tip. Can we get some yo's? Hello. How am I doing? I'm still sick. <laughs> okay, chatters. Does my voice sound different? To me, it's, I sound congested as hell. But I'm pushing through. Wait, I just imagined myself doing voices, but they all sound the same. It sounds normal, slight, but yeah, okay. I mean, because, like, I'm not congested, but, like, I have, like, a little bit of snot. So it sounds like... Like, you know when you're congested, like, your ears feel like it's muffled? But, like, I'm not super congested. I just, everything sounds muffled. Like, when I've been watching TV the past week, I've had to have my volume, like, fire five levels higher than normal. <clears throat> I hope by, like, 
Wednesday. I'm better. <coughs> okay, we gotta go back to the mansion. And it's not COVID. I took another test on Friday. It's not COVID. It's probably just a head cold. What I used to have head colds every single. Oh. How wonderful to meet you, Detective. Seriously, it's an honor. Yes. Um. Yeah. Nice to meet you too. Can I help you or? Huh? Do you really not know who I am? I'm kind of a big deal on the Rhyme University campus, and I know you go to school there too. Know anything about this so-called big deal, Tim? Not that I can think of. They call me the quiz professor. I'm actually still a student, but that's what they call me. And this is my partner, Toucanon. Toucanon, burning beak. It's literally just a fucking toucan. Pokemon do better. So you're the um, professor quiz. And that's me, I'm majoring in Pokemon studies. I can't resist sharing the knowledge I've learned, so I quiz all sorts of people. That explains the nickname. This quiz professor is definitely on the eccentric side. Can I, can I? I'll admit, you got me there. The Pikachu doing detective work is pretty eccentric, too. Why don't we celebrate our meeting with a quiz? Um, we're pretty busy working on a case right now. Okay, here's the first question. In one ear and out the other. Oh well, I guess it can't hurt to play along. I guess. Here goes nothing. <coughs> oh, what Pokemon catches prey using its long tongue? The Pokemon in question is somewhere in this very city, so go out there and look for it. What's your tongue like, Tukin on mine opening up that beak of yours? Kind of. Nothing extraordinary here. Thanks, anyway. A Pokemon with a long tongue, huh? If there's one nearby, it shouldn't take too long for us to find. When you find the Pokemon in question, come tell me what it is. I'll be waiting right here. Answer correctly and I'll teach you some trivia about it. I wonder if it's the Lickitung we talked to ten minutes ago. Hmm. A lick. That's a long tongue. I'm amazed it's stretched so far. Say, Tim, this lick tongue might be the answer to that quiz question. I think you're right. Let's go tell the quiz professor. Oh my god, we actually have to go back? Do do you am! So, detective, did you figure out the answer to my first question? Yes. I sure did. It's Lickitung, right? Bingo. Yes, you've got it. Lickitung uses its long tongue to catch its prey. According to reports, contact with the saliva causes a tingling sensation, as well as a persistent itch. Oh, wow. Good thing we didn't get licked. Uh, I'm feeling itchy just imagining it. Yeah. Thanks for the morning. <laughs> Thanks for the morning. Thanks for the warning, Tukidon. We'll make sure any lick tongue we meet keeps his tongue to itself. Well, that was only the first coup question. I guess it was a little too easy. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Dude, it was... Okay, pause. I have a headache. Okay, it's gone. Just about. It's funny. Cause I was like hanging out with my sister this weekend, and anytime I would cough, she would get scared. I would throw up. She she doesn't like the sound of coughing. <laughs> it was so funny watching her freak out. And no, I did not cough on her. That's mean. I would never do that to my favorite sister. <clears throat> Are you saying there's more? Of course! And here's where they get serious. Time for question number two! 
What Pokemon uses its cute looks to put you out of your guard so it can steal from you? Hey, we don't have time to deal with another theft. Hmm. What Pokemon tries to steal from people? I think the cute looks part is our biggest hint. Pretty sure it's not you, Tukano. Yeah, no. Totally okay. Tim, let's go search the area. I think it's the cat. What a cute Pokemon. That's a Perleon. Hey. Aw, oh, how sweet. I think it wants some attention. Sorry, we're busy now, but we can play with you later. Hold up, Tim. Check your pockets. Why would I need to check my... Wait, what? My pen's gone. I thought so. This is your doing, isn't it, Perleon? Can't pull one over on a great detective like me. Now hand it over. Pause where I can see him. Oh, my pen. Wow, you can't take your eyes off this pearl line for a second. Yeah, that was a close one. But at least we figured out the answer to the quiz question. Right, it's pearl line. Let's go tell the quiz professor. Okay, I hope the question, the animals are just like in this area. Like, thankfully, none are in like the cityscape. So I'll, I'll complete out the side machine real quick. So, detective, did you figure out the answer to the second cool question? Yes. Yeah. The answer is purloin, right? <clears throat> or purloin. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. That's correct. Purloin often steals things from people. And they sometimes scratch people who try to reclaim those stolen items, so be careful of their claws. The purloin we met wasn't that rowdy. But we should probably be careful in the future. True. Better safe than sorry. You know. It's asking if we agree that quizzes can actually be pretty fun. There's certainly a chance to learn more about Pokemon. Okay, let the quiz continue. Time for question three. Best buds always stick together. What Pokemon moves as a group? A Pokemon that moves as a group. Like one that travels in herds or flocks or something? Nope. In this case, the whole group counts as one Pokemon. Is that even a thing? Can you give us a hint, Tukanon? Gano. Hmm. Well, that's not very sporting. This Pokemon has quite the unique appearance. Go ahead and see if you can find it. Perloin is not even cute. Yeah, it's kind of ugly. It would be cuter if, like, it was gray, like the other cat Pokemon. But it's purple, so it looks too, like, extra. <clears throat> Lynx. Wow. Those movements are in perfect unison. That's Folix. They always move around in groups of six. Lynx. Lay. Lay. They're in the middle of formation training. Pikachu. Do you think Folix is the Pokemon the quiz professor was talking about? Six working together as one. Yep. That fits the bill. Then let's go tell her the answer. So, did you figure out the answer to my final question? Yes. I think so. The answer is Falling, right? Bingo, that's it! Falling is a very peculiar Pokemon. There are actually six of them working together as one. The one in the front, known as the Brass, leads the, order leads the others. <coughs> Excuse me. The one at the front, known as the Brass, leads the order. <laughs> The one of the Fred known as the Brass leads the others by issuing orders. In battle, they change formation as needed and use teamwork to secure the win. That's a pretty interesting Pokemon. Sure, but I bet it's tough for the troopers if they've got an incompetent Brass. Can I? Yeah, sorry, I'm sure they're all perfectly competent. That's all for today's quiz. I hope you're as enthusiastic about quizzes and Pokefacts as I am. Yeah, I've learned a lot. Glad to hear it. I got some new questions ready for next time. Oh, okay. Please let them be easy ones. <clears throat> and maybe she could, you know, wait till we're not in the middle of something. Can I? Yeah. See you, Tukanon. Plus, 
One. Now go back to the mansion. <laughs> Dude, Pikachu is me. Exhausted after going down five steps. Literally me. And now we gotta interview the Pokemon again. <clears throat> Fable. Well, Fable, can I ask you some questions? Faye? Fable. Faye? She says she has way better hearing than most Pokemon do. Faye, Faye? Wow, you can hear footsteps and voices coming from any room in the mansion. That's incredible. Now that you mention it, I'm pretty sure I've heard that Clefable can hear sounds from over half a mile away. Half a mile? A human can never dream of having hearing like that. Faye? Faye? Um, could you speak more softly, Tim? She says her ears are sensitive to loud noises. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Clefable. I'll try to keep it down from now on. <clears throat> yes? Oh, it's you. Isn't your investigation finished already? I'm sorry, but it'll take a bit more time. This is absurd. We all know Barnes did it. Would you give it a rest, Claudia? Barnes just isn't the type of person who would do this type of thing. Sounds like an awful lot of wishful thinking to me. Barnes simply wanted the aroma drop for himself. He's been play acting as the perfect butler, but all he's serving us is a platter of greed and deceit. Just listen to yourself. How could you say that about a man who served us faithfully for so many years? Open your eyes already. Barnes has betrayed you. Please, calm down, both of you. Barnes's ducklet was sighted a few minutes ago. We're hoping that when we find ducklet, we'll also find a clue. Oh, excellent. I'm certain you'll find proof that Barnes is innocent. And where is ducklet now? She got away. We're about to go search for her. Hmm. Such incompetence! Hurry up and find her! It's not gonna be easy finding Ducklet with just the two of us. Let's get some help from other Pokemon to search for Ducklet. <clears throat> Gow! She says we can ask away. Do you have any special skills that might help us catch the thief? Gow! She says she's got a very keen nose. That could come in handy. Maybe she can track something by following its scent. Yeah, that might work. Manic. A manic trick. Can we talk for a moment? Manic? Hmm, manic. Come on, no need to be that way. This will be quick. Hmm. We're having trouble finding a Pokemon right away. Can you use your special skills to help us, Manic Trick? Manic? He says he's got a sharp nose and is good at tracking, but... But... Manic? Manic. He's working, so he can't leave his post. <laughs> Manic Trick says devoted as ever is his job, I see. How is the police investigation going? Have you made any new discoveries? Hmm, Manic. Oh, come on, you can tell us just a little. Manic. Yeesh, not even... Not gonna budge, eh, Manatrick? The police have their reasons for keeping quiet. Manatrick is only doing his job. This room is currently under police investigation. Only authorized personnel are permitted. Okay, let's start deducing. Ooh, deducing time. Okay. 
Have we found a Pokemon with the skills necessary to help us search for Ducklet? Let's think about the information we gathered. Okay, it's obviously smelling. And then Manetric cannot leave its post. I'm not- I, I decided I'm not gonna read through the dialogues. This is a baby game. If I don't get this right, I'm literally never okay. playing again. Don't worry, I'll, I'll keep playing. I'll complete this game all the way. <laughs> Guys, I'm doing a 100% completionist run today. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> I would... My voice would die. Die. Growlithe said she had a good sense of smell, right? Maybe we can use that to follow Ducklet's scent. We could sniff out Ducklet by tracking the scent she left at the crime of the sea. I bet Growlithe could do that no problem. Great idea, Tim. Easy. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Let's ask Growlithe for help. Hope she can find Ducklet. Growlithe! Growlithe, I've got a favor to ask of you that it, of that excellent nose of yours. I'd like your help finding Ducklet. Yeah. It's possible that Ducklet is somehow mixed up in this incident. She might even know who stole the key from you. We really need your help to solve this case. Go. Yeah. But really, you've been really wanting to help Dennis too. Go, yeah, go. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Growlithe. Go. Yeah. <clears throat> huh? You want me to ride on your back? Go! Yeah. Ah, so you can take me wherever the scent leads you. Got it. That should be a lot easier than trying to give directions at every turn. Go! Yeah. What do you think, Tim? You want us to track this scent down right away? Yes, sir? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I leave it up to you? You got it. Let's go, Growlithe. Okay. Let's do this! <laughs> Sorry, but could you sit down for a sec? Holy! All right. Let's go! Finally, Pokemon dialogue. <clears throat> this is the first time I've ever give, given someone a ride. She says this is the first time she's ever given somebody a ride. Well, why did you repeat what I said? Oh, whoops. When it's just you and me talking, I said I don't need to interpret for Tim. Anyway, let's get the search in away. How do you track the scent? I just sniff the ground, and I can tell where the scent is strongest. Gotcha. Look for where the scent is strongest. Right. And there are still traces of Ducklet's scent inside the house. I think I can track her from here. Okay, let's get going, Growlithe. Yeah. Okay, ride action. Hold down the R button while moving to follow the scent of whatever you're looking for. You can get off Growlithe by going back to Tim. Goodbye, Tim. <clears throat> we don't need you anymore. Rallis is gonna be my new full-time partner. <coughs> I'm picking up Ducklet's center on here. Ducklet always leaves this way when she takes walks or goes shopping. Her scent is still lingering here. If you follow that smell, we should be able to find Ducklet. Let's track the scent carefully. Don't want to lose it. You're right. Ain't no way I went to the park too.
We were just here. <clears throat> we found you. The scent. Did you find her? Yes, I'm sure of it. Come out, Ducklet. It's your pal Growlithe. What? Ducklet aspires to elegance. I was wondering who found me. It's good to see a friendly face. Wait, who's that on your back? Hi there, I'm the great Detective Pikachu. And you're a friend of Growlithe's? I'd like to think so. Putting that aside, though, could you tell me why you're way out here? Some strange humans were chasing me. It was really scary. I don't know what I could have possibly done to make them so upset. They think you may have been involved in a crime. Huh? What crime? Something precious was stolen from the house. And you and Barnes are currently under suspicion. Say what? Neither of us would ever do something like that. I know, I don't think it was you. I need to ask you some questions to help prove your innocence, and Barnes is too, is that alright? I guess. What? I'm Barnes's partner. You're always helping out because he's so busy, right? <clears throat> like when you buy beans at the Hi Hi Cafe. Barnes must have good taste, much like myself. You drink that black water too? I tried it once because Barnes seemed to enjoy it so much, but I practically gagged when it hit my tongue. Too bitter. Huh. It's a sophisticated flavor for a sophisticated Pokemon. Yes, well, I'm sure be suffix. <laughs> yes, well, I'm sure I'll be sophisticated like that someday. Just watch. Hmm. Can you tell me about Barnes? Barnes is my partner. He's a true gentleman. If you've met him, I'm sure you understand what I mean. Yep, I thought I might have... I think I might have had a beat in the gentleman department. Right. Anyway, he's really good at telling me when I've done something well. I mean, I look like it, but I'm actually a really good swimmer. Barnes always compliments me when I show off my fancy swimming techniques in the fountain. Not one. No one that lovely could possibly be a bad person. Right? Right? Like I said, I don't think he did it. Don't worry, Ducklet. We'll clear Barnes's name. Thank you, Growlithe. <clears throat> Why are you hiding here? There must have been plenty of other places you could have picked. This is my favorite spot. And like I told you, I got chased around by a bunch of strangers. I was pretty... I was feeling pretty ruffled, so I came here to calm down. Gotcha. See that water over there? I love bathing in it. Oh, yeah, maybe I should try it too. Whoa there, Growlithe. Aren't you a fire type? Pretty sure a bath's a bad idea. Oh, good point. Walking by the water fire... <coughs> <coughs> okay. Who walking by the waterside feels lovely too. It's nice and cool without all the wetness. Sweet, I'll try that instead. Thanks, Ducklet. Hmm. What were you up to this morning before the incident occurred? All I did was eat breakfast like always. Then I got really sleepy. Not like always. If you fell asleep after breakfast, when did you get out? Well, at some point, Turner woke me up. I usually go shopping right after Bards asked me to. But today I was in a hurry because I overslept. So I rushed to grab my black... So I rushed to grab my bag and flew it up from a window on the second floor. And you're sure it was Turner who woke you up? Yes, I'm sure. And Growlithe, you fell asleep too? Yep, but only because today's breakfast was so yummy. I guess I ate so much that I got sleepy after. Do you two always eat your meals together? 
Not usually, no. I always eat with cremorant. What? There's a cremorant in the household? Yep. Cremorant is Turner's partner. Huh. Is that so? It's true that Turner never mentioned that. Hmm. So according to your story, Ducklet, you were out on an errand when the crime took place. But because you were asleep earlier, you're not sure exactly what time you left. Yeesh. If even Ducklet doesn't even know anything, how are we going to solve this case? You mean we might never find the jewel? No, we're still got one more lead. The Cremorant that Ducklet mentioned. I'm wondering why we never saw it in the mansion. How long has Cremorant been gone? I don't know. By the time I noticed, he was already gone. <clears throat> we should probably go and talk to him then. Can you track Cremorant down with your scent, Growlithe? If you have something with Cremorant's scent on it, then sure. Hmm. I don't suppose you can use this? Oh, that's one of Cremorant's feathers. Just as I thought. Good thing I picked it up earlier. With that, I can definitely track Cremorant's scent. Now we just have to figure out where to pick up the trail. Since Cremorant's scent... Since Cremorant seems to have left the mansion, we'll probably try for around the gate. What should I do? I'm really worried about Barnes. I understand how you feel, but if you go home now, things will probably get more complicated. Can you wait here a little longer while we solve the case? Okay. Please, I'm counting on both of you to take care of Barnes. Leave it to us. Right then, let's go. Growlithe. <laughs> <coughs> Time to go back. Dude, Pikachu is just leaning to the left. Why? Growlithe is so cute. I think Growlithe is one of my like top ten. Well, did you get a whiff of Cremorant scent? Yes, I've got it. It's still quite strong, so Cremorant was probably. It's still quite strong, so Cremorant was probably walking around here this morning. So we just need to follow that scent. Okay, Growlithe. Follow your nose. I don't even know what a Cremorant is. Ain't no way it went down the alley. Everybody's going in the Forbidden Alley. over there could that be <clears throat> oh he's still sleeping Grimorant gulping gourmand trubbish in squalor paradise Yes, it's Karamarant. Must be feeling pretty carefree to fall asleep in a place like this. What is he saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you implying there, Pikachu? I think he hates the homeless. Anyway. We've been looking for you, Karamarant. What? Oh, hey, it's Growlithe. What are you doing here? That's what I'd like to ask you. Um, wait. What's going on? Sorry to bother you with w Sorry to bother you when you just woke up, but do you think you can answer some questions? Who are you? No need to be scared. I'm the great Detective Pikachu, and I'm here to help you. Great do what's it, Pico? Pikachu is my friend, and he has some questions for you, Cremorant. I um, still don't know what's going on, but sure. What do you want to ask me, dude? Hey. 
Are you Turner's partner, Cremant? Sure am, dude. What about it? We were worried about you because you weren't at home. Really? My bad. Hmm. Can you tell me about Turner? Turner's my partner. He's a good dude, dude. Me and him go way back. Cremant is always helping Turner out with his duties at the house. If Turner, if Turner calls for me, I head right over, no matter where he is. I even go shopping with him, dude. If he needs something, Garrett, I just swallow it whole. Wait. You swallow it? Is that safe for anyone? Oh my god, did the bird swallow the gemstone? It's fine, dude. Just rub my back and I'll hurt whatever is filling my tongue. Lickety split. What? More like lickety spit. But I guess grammar ants are kind of built like that, huh? Why were you sleeping out here of all places? Because I got real sleepy after I ate breakfast. Hey, me too. Whoa, really? Hmm. So Ducklet and the others all fell asleep. After that, Turner woke me up and I flew right out of the house. Why did he wake you up? Uh, because... What was it again? He said to go to the back alley, I think. You don't even remember that? <laughs> what a guy. I kind of fell asleep a few times on my way here, too. But in the end, I made it. I was so sleepy. Right when I was about to zonk out, I found this choice bed. So I took a nap, dude. He's talking about me, by the way. You thought Trubbish was a bed? Yeah, dude, like super squishy. This guy is something else. If you wanted to sleep, it would make more sense to go home first. I'm sure Turner's worried about you. Turner! That's right, I gotta go back to Turner. Any particular reason? Because he's my partner, dude. Oh, wait, did he say not to go back? Which was it again? Hey, don't look at me. I really think you should get back. Turner must be worried about you. Hmm. I'd like to hear about what Cremorant was doing at the time the incident occurred. You said you ate breakfast and got sleepy, right? Yep. You must have eaten a lot. Same as you usual, actually. But even now, my tongue is so stuffed, dude. Wasn't breakfast a while ago? Why are you still so full? I'm not sure, dude. My tongue feels the same as when I swallow something big. He swallowed the gem. Something big, huh? Interesting. Mm. Well, we've heard from Cramorant, but his answers weren't very clear. Let's try talking to Trubbish. Huh, me? Trubbish? Did, did you need something for me? We're investigating a crime. Do you mind if we ask you a few questions? A crime? I'm sure I don't know anything about that. That's fine. You're not in any trouble. We're just trying to gather all the information we can. Will you help us, please? I guess I could answer a few questions. Hey. Could you tell me a bit about yourself? Sure, but there's not much to say. All right. Then have you noticed anything strange recently? Strange? Well, I've just been gathering trash from around the city like I do every day. You do that every day? Wow, thank you. It's just my routine. I guess I did collect some unusual trash today. Does that count as strange? What was so unusual about it? It was stuck to a Whimsicott's head. They were in front of a big house when I found it. A Whimsicott getting stuck, stuck. <laughs> stuck, stuck. A Whimsicott getting stuff stuck in his head doesn't sound all that unusual to me. Pikachu, you can't say things like that. Trash is important to Trubbish. Don't call it stuff. Hmm. What brings you here? Well, I'm not great around humans. And humans don't usually come here, so it seemed like a safe place. Did they do something mean to you? No, I just don't like too much noise. And humans are so noisy, don't you think? Um, I guess. Anyway, this place is nice and quiet. Hey. <clears throat> do you still have that trash that was stuck to Whimsicott? Yeah, I was saving it for a snack. Why, do you want it? I'd like to at least have a look at it. Could you show it to us? A million dollars, that is the gem. Sure, I guess. Oh. 
minus a million dollars. <laughs> it's pretty crumpled up, but it looks like a note. Hey, it smells like the rooms in our house. You mean Dennis's mansion? Hmm, that's interesting. Let me see. Open the window after Barnes leaves. That will be the signal. Once the window is open, I'll send Ponyard in with Winsicott to cut the case. You should then be able to collect the jewel. If you play your part properly, you should be able to frame Barnes for everything. And if you're successful, we'll both be coming into quite a lot of money. Good luck. This is a note for the culprit. What? So the thief had an accomplice, huh? That must be why there are multiple Pokemon involved. Whatever the case, this is definitely a big clue. Uh-oh. This is great, Pikachu. Sorry about this, Trubbish, but do you think we could have this piece of trash? Please. Um, I guess if you wanted that badly, sure. Thanks. I'll be sure to make it up to you later. Okay. The plot thickens. I guess we managed to ask everything we wanted to. Shall we head back home? Yeah, we got a good clue, so let's go meet up with Tim again. Got it. What are you going to do, Ch Chamorant? Want to come back to the mansion with us? Nah, I'm good. I'm going to head back to my own base. My tum feels like way heavy for that breakfast I ate. Poor Cramorant looks pretty uncomfortable. Okay, just rest here for a while then. Once you feel like you can move again, come on back to the mansion. Okay. All right, let's head back, Ralith. Yes. New theory. The wife conspired with the new housekeeper. The guy who has Cramorant as his aide. They drugged all the Pokemon in the building. That way they would not see it. They conspired <coughs> with the Blade Pokemon to cut open the case. Cramorant ate the gem. I think it's the wife and the new housekeeper. Hey, you look like you're having fun. Let me play too. Sorry, bud. This is serious business. I can play with you after our investigation if you want. Wait, I wonder if I try to talk to the fighting Pokemon with Growlithe. They'll, like, let me talk to him. It is I who was most powerful. Don't make me laugh. I'm the most powerful when I'm around here. Looks like they're getting ready for a scrap. We should probably keep our distance. Okay, I guess not. Sad. Oh, they're playing now. Cute. Your Pikachu is leaning to the left. <laughs> Tim, we have found a major clue. Mm -hmm. We're back, Tim. Thanks, both of you. Are you getting, are you getting down off of Growlithe now, Pikachu? Can you get down on your own? <laughs> Please. Who do you think I am? I can handle this. How did your investigation of the Growlithe go, Pikachu? About that, Tim. We found some incredible evidence. Really? What is it? Well, you see... And that's about it. Wow. Good work, Pikachu. I think we're definitely closer to solving the case now. Yep, now hurry up and open your case notebook. Let's think this over together and organize all the info we've got. Okay, let's start deducing. Let's start deducing. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. That note rubbish found. We can prove Barnes's innocence with that, can't we? That's exactly what I was thinking. Here's what the note said. Open the window after Barnes leaves. That'll be the signal. This is clear proof that Barnes isn't the culprit, and that the real culprit is still the real corpor culprit is still out there. Easy. So there's someone out there behind all this. And not only that, there are multiple culprits working together. Someone who sent Pokemon in from outside, and someone inside the mansion who let them in. <clears throat> you think whoever let the Pokemon inside lives in the mansion? That seems like the natural conclusion. But how did the culprit unlock the door to the jewel storage room? Only Barnes and Mr. Dennis can use the key, right? Usually, yeah, but the culprit found a way. But wait to what? Think about it, Tim. When did Growlithe say the key disappeared? Mm -hmm. She said it disappeared while she was sleeping. That's right. And anyone could have taken the key with Growlithe while, while Growlithe was asleep. Hmm, I guess you're right. But Growlithe doesn't usually nap. Do you really think she just happened to nap right when they were about to commit the crime? That's just it. Think back to when all the different Pokemon in the mansion told us. <clears throat> Did you notice anything they had in common? Anything strange? Mm -hmm. All of the Pokemon from the mansion said they fell asleep. That's right, Tim. Glad you noticed that. Mm. At the exact same time the jewel was stolen, all the Pokemon in the mansion were asleep. There's no way that's a coincidence. You think someone wanted it to happen? I'd say the odds of that are pretty high. Then there's gotta be some kind of evidence we can use to prove that. Let's search the mansion, Tim. Dude, the blood thickens. <coughs> the blood thickens. Cow, cow, growl. She's asking what you want. You want to talk to her or have her track a scent? Let's talk. Gal. She says we can ask away. Oh, no, no, no more. I see. Hmm. What was the situation in the mansion at the time of the incident? We're all still looking into that. I'm sure we get more direct answers by asking the witnesses themselves. He's right. We should take this one step at a time and gather our own intel. Not helping. So, D.U.M. See if there's new like dialogue. getting hint. <coughs> you want to look into why the Pokemon were all sleeping, right? Want me to help? Yes, sir. Okay. Hmm. Why were all the Pokemon in the mansion sound asleep? Think back to what Cramrat and the others told us. Didn't they all say they got sleepy after they ate? I wonder if there was something in their food. Why don't you check out the Pokemon's food dishes? Oh, okay. Makes sense. Hmm. This is the dish that Growlithe's food was in. There's some sort of powder on it. How did we not see it earlier? Dude, I literally said check the fucking dish earlier. <laughs> hey, Tim! This is sleep powder! Wow. You could tell that by just looking, Pikachu? I'm a Pokemon, remember? Not to mention a great detective. Of course I can tell what kind of powder this is. It's not even something to brag about. 
Which means there was sleep powder in the food. I think we can be pretty sure of that. Let's do some deducing. Okay. <clears throat> Did you figure out what caused all the Pokemon in the mansion to fall asleep? Okay. The Pokemon in the mansion said they all fell asleep after eating breakfast. And in one of the food bowls, we found traces of sleep powder. That leads us to only one possible conclusion. Someone deliberately put the Pokemon in the mansion to sleep with sleep powder. Now who did it? Who? Hmm. It's getting easier to picture just how the crime was committed. But where could the culprit have gotten the sleep powder in the first place? In this city, I can think of a few places. But if we follow the path that was used to bring it inside, we might learn more about the culprit. You'll need Growlithe's help again for that, right? Why don't you take a little of the powder with you just in case? One step ahead of you. Now let's go talk to Growlithe, Tim. Hey Growlithe, can you take a whiff of this sleep powder we found on your dish? Yeah. Ow. Thanks. Careful not to sniff up too much, though. Gow, gow. Okay, now we can follow the scent of the sleep powder, right? Then let's get going, Growlithe. Who did it? Was it the scientist? Imagine. Okay, I saw the the V Pokemon had a blue dialogue. <clears throat> What's going on? What do I do? What's up, Ro Rebobi? You look panicked. My dear Kitafoy went out to gather nectar, but they haven't come back yet. It never takes them this long. I was so worried. What if something's happened? Rombobi seems really upset. I'd like to help, but Kitafoy are really tiny Pokemon. It'd be tough to find him in such a big city. I don't even know where they usually gather nectar! Hmm, let's see. Hey Growlithe, do you think you could track down the cutie fly with your nose? Definitely! I've already picked up the scent of the nectar from Rimbumi! Then if we follow that scent, we should be able to find the cutie fly. Could you really? Oh, that would be incredible! Could you please find my dear cutie fly? We're on it! How many cutie fly went out to gather nectar? Two! I'll be waiting here, please bring them to me if you find them! Two cutie fly coming right up. Let's go, Growlithe. <clears throat> okay. That is kind of cool that there are, like, Pikachu exclusive missions, too. Oh, there's two smells. I can smell something sweet in this bush. There might be a cutie fly here. Hey, cutie fly, if you're in there, come out, please. <laughs> cutie fly, happy nectar collector. <laughs> oh, go away. Hey, calm down. We're not here for your nectar. Oh, really? Sorry. I just thought you were here to steal the nectar that I gathered, too. Us, too? Was there someone else? That's right. A Pokemon keeps coming to steal my nectar. That's why I hid here. Oh, there you are. Look, it's back! Oh, oh, huh? 
Come on, give me them uh, those sweet treats. Lickitungs, you're the one causing problems for a cutie to fly. No, I'm not. I just want a little nectar, that's all. With a tongue like yours, you take all the nectar cutie fly has in one lick. Well, maybe, but I want something sweet. Mm hmm. Then why don't you come see Rumba Bee later? If you do, I'll share some of the pollen puffs Rumba Bee makes for us. Literally? Okay. I guess I can wait for now. Yeesh. What a pest. Anyway, can you go on back to Rimba Me now? Yes, thank you, Pikachu and Growlithe. I'm glad we found Kitafly. That's all. Thanks to your nose. Much appreciated, Growlithe. Okay, so once you find it, the scent disappears. That is very good. Wait, it stopped. Ooh, a venonet. That's new. There's a sweet smell wafting down from that tree. It's too high for us to reach, though. Hey, cutie fly, can you hear me? so peacefully wait are you saying you didn't come back because you were napping rimbo me's been so worried about you no i didn't realize so much time has passed i found such a nice napping spot that i couldn't resist dozing a little must be nice to live such a carefree life huh. anyway i'm glad you're safe thanks for telling me i'll go straight home a nap huh don't feel too bad, Growlithe. Nobody's mad at you for sleeping. Okay. Well, now that we've found both cutie fly, I know I can count on you, Growlithe. <laughs> A compliment I'll have to tell Sanji after this later. You two might not speak the same language, but he definitely seems to understand your feelings. Why don't we head back and make sure those cutie fly make it back to Rombabi? Got it. I'll head right back. Pikachu, Growlithe, thank you so much. Both cutie fly came home safely. No need to thank us. Just glad to have another case closed. Good job coming straight home, Kitafly. Sorry we weren't you. Kitafly, please promise me two things from now on. One, don't go any more dangerous. And two, don't goof around on your way home. Okay, I promise. I promise. <laughs> easy. You know what else is super easy? Um, subscribe. Because guys... We are four hours in the stream. I just need to finish this mission, please. I need to finish it. <laughs> I'm doing all the side quests. I don't need to be doing side quests. There's literally no reward for side quests. But it is super easy to subscribe. It's $4.99, just $5. Keep your coffee, get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe, see if you have a Prime sub available. After the ad, I'm gonna do the story mission. I'm gonna beat it in one sitting. The whole game. No joke. Dude, it's already four o'clock. Or no, it's three o'clock. Four hours up time. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, Venom has sleeping powder. I forgot. I'll wait to talk to them. What do you want? We're busy practicing our formations right now. Oh, sorry. Don't mind me. They're always doing something or other around here. Oh, Pikachu. Thanks so much for before. Don't worry about it. Let me know if you ever need help down the line. Oh no, Pikachu! The scent stops here. What do we do now? There must be something around here. Let's look around the terrace. Sure. Oh, no. 
been in it. Hunts with sparkling red eyes. It's a venonet. No mistaking those massive eyes. Apparently, they can even see in the dark. So sparkly. Yes, yes. What is it, yes? Do you mind if we ask you some questions? Okay. So, I'm really busy, but yes, yes? Hmm. What's got you so busy? Oh, nothing. I'm just eating, that's all. But I have to eat fast. Soon it will be time for dinner and more eating. Yes, yes. You've got plenty of time till then, though, right? Are you always in such a hurry? Yes, yes. At least that's what everyone tells me. Yes. <clears throat> Have you tried maybe chilling out a bit? Can't. This is my natural state. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. But I'm not sure. It's funny. Hmm. What are you doing here? This spot is great because you can see the whole city and it's lovely and pretty and nice. And on top of that, many, many, many teeny tiny bugs together here at night. Oh, yes, it's marvelous. <coughs> Do you like bugs, Venonat? Yes, yes, very much so. Yes, they're my favorite treat. Your favorite treat? I, uh, I think we can drop this line of questioning. Hmm. Is this your sleep powder? Nope, definitely not mine. No, sir. He... How can you tell? I use my sleep powder to catch prey. It doesn't smell as soothing or beautiful. Nope, nope, not one bit. I see. I do believe this is Lilligant's fragrance. Oh, yes. Yeah, and where can we find Lilligant? I would check one of the nearby hedges, probably. No, definitely, yes. To the greenery. Lilligant, floral fashionista. <clears throat> it's Lilligant. This Pokemon is known for having an aroma that calms the heart and mind. So that's what that nice smell was. You think I smell nice? You're sweet. Do you mind if we ask you a few questions? Not at all. Your timing is actually perfect. I was just taking a break from dancing. Ask me whatever you like. Hmm. Can you tell me more about yourself? Getting personal, are we? <laughs> Alas, I'm rather unremarkable. Just a lilligant with a love for dance. You wouldn't have to look hard to find many others like me. Is she flirting? Hmm. What are you doing here? Why, this is my favorite place. Basking in the sunlight here feels ever so good. And dancing here fills me with endless joy. You dance here a lot, then. Yes, sometimes humans and Pokemon even come to watch. Everyone who watches me dance seems to fall asleep. But at least, they're smiling when they do. <clears throat> Would you like a demonstration? Uh, la la la. Oh, nice. <laughs> I could really use a nap. Wait, Lillian, please, please. Don't dance. Hmm. Is this your sleep powder? Yes, I recognize the fragrance. Do you remember giving this to anyone? No. You see, my sleep powder just puffs out naturally whenever I dance. Though, thinking on it now, there was a human who came to watch me dance recently. Really? Do you remember what they looked like? I'm afraid not. I was in the zone. Hmm, that's rough. Hey, it's something. Thanks for your help, Lilligant. I see. Now we know how the sleep powder was obtained. Are we done investigating? Right. Yes, and I like to tell Tim what we found. Let's hurry back, Rowlith. Sure. Ooh, fast travel, nice. <clears throat> I see. So you're still not sure who the culprit is. Right. But we did learn something important. And what's that? Think about it, Tim. The sleep powder scent trail led directly from the mansion to the terrace. Do you really think that's normal? I guess it would make sense if the person who brought the sleep powder already lived in the mansion. Exactly. Which makes it even more likely that it was an inside job. Mm. Someone managed to get some of Lilligan's sleep powder, then they mixed it into the Pokemon's breakfast, 
Sure, sounds like an inside job to me. Which means the culprit is someone in the mansion. Let's do some more sleuthing and find out who. Connect more interviews? Bruh. A no new growlith dialogue. Probably gotta interview humans then. Hmm. Ask me anything you like. My staff member Turner always prefers food here. It's Turner and the wife, I swear to God. He used to be one of Barnes' duties, but the task has fallen to Turner since he joined the staff. He's truly made himself quite useful. It's Turner and the wife, I bet you guys a billion dollars. Yes. Did you still want something? Yes, I'm sorry. We really appreciate your help. Yes? I don't know anything about Growlithe's food. I would suggest you ask Turner about that. Did you happen to see Growlithe eating her food today? No, I didn't. I'm not in the habit of watching her eat. The Pokemon in the house eat in a separate room from us humans. <clears throat> if they ate in the same room as us, their fur, feathers, or what have you could get in our food, so they eat in a different room, at my request, of course. A policy like that is not going to make you very popular with Pokemon, lady. Could we please talk to you again, Mr. Turner? Yeah, of course. Ask me anything. Yes. Mr. Dennis is really picky about the ingredients I can use for Gala's food. He, tell me, he tells me what to put in it, and I make the food to his exact specifications. Sounds like Mr. Dennis really cares about Growlithe's health. Yes, he truly cares about Pokemon. A good egg, that one. Dennis seems like quite the guy. What's healthy and what's tasty doesn't always match up, though. <clears throat> yes. I'd be happy to tell you anything I know. Yes. I know exactly what kind of food Growlithe prefers. She's particularly fond of sweets. When I'm in charge of her meals, I made a point of preparing sweet desserts for her. You're a good guy, Barnes. You can learn a thing or two from this guy, Tim. Give me more sweets. Is Pikachu alright? He seems to be acting strangely. Don't worry. This is normal for him. Okay, let's start deducing. Let's start deducing. Deducing sounds so much like another word, and I'm very, like, scared I'm gonna slip up one time. Okay. Who would have been able to mix sleep powder into Growlithe's food? Let's figure out using the info we've gathered. It's obviously Turner. Okay. The only person who could have put sleep powder into Pokemon's meals is Turner. It has got to be him. Bingo. He's in charge of preparing Pokemon meals, he could have easily slipped it into their food. However, this fact alone isn't enough to implicate Turner. <laughs> hmm. Turner is the one who used the sleep powder. But that's just conjecture. We don't have any hard evidence. We'll definitely need more to find some proof, but I'm not sure how. It's kind of an aggressive boo, but we could try shaking them up a bit. Let's see if we can make Turner nervous. We might learn something based on how he reacts. Think you're up on it? It's worth a try. Let's ruffle his feathers. Yes. Oh, hello, Tim. How's the investigation going? We're actually a bit stuck at the moment. I'm so sorry to hear that. Is there anything I can do to help? I was actually hoping to ask you a few more questions, if you don't mind. By all means, ask away. Excuse me. You've got a partner, Cramorin, right, Mr. Turner? What? How, how do you know that? He came up a while ago when we were gathering statements in the city. Hmm. I see. I hope you don't think I was hiding that fact or anything. I was just afraid he might become a suspect. I did tell the police, of course. Really? It's been a while since I've seen it, actually. Worryingly so. Where could he have gone? Oh, we just saw Cramorin walking back towards the mansion. Why that little- I told him to stay put! Hmm. Stay put. Why did you tell him that, Mr. Turner? 
Oh, um, I, I just didn't want him going out on his own. I've been so worried that he might have gotten mixed up with the crime somehow. Thank you so much for finding him, Tim. It's such a huge relief. <coughs> mm -hmm. We're thinking a poniard might have cut the jewel case. Really? I mean, yes, I, I think you've cracked it. So, it was a poniard that punched you, Mr. Turner. Yes, it most certainly was. It really hurt, in fact. It's, in fact, it still hurts. Yeesh, what a terrible liar. We got him, boys. Based on Turner's reaction, it's pretty clear that he's hiding something. I just wish I'd be able to dig a little deeper. Nah, you did a great job. At the very least, we learned one thing. Cremorant is the key to solving this case. All that's left is to ask him ourselves. So, we're gonna go see Cremorant. Yep, just you wait, Turner. We'll catch you yet. We're gonna tickle Cremorant and the gem is gonna come popping out. That's why he feels so heavy. Oh, he's here. Look, Pikachu. It's Cremorant. Weren't you going to go back to Turner? Didn't make it very far, did you? Cremorant? You've been resting because you feel too full to walk. Why is the Why is Cremorant the only one that feels so unwell? Rowlet and the others are fine. He must have really overeaten, or he swallowed something in his digestive system that he can't handle. Hey, wait a second. Hmm, a missing jewel, and now Cramorant's full belly. What are you thinking, Pikachu? I figured it out. Ah, a bolt of brilliance. <laughs> the stolen jewel we seek is right over there. Did you figure something out, Pikachu? Oh yeah, I've got it all figured out. I bet you have it figured out too, haven't you? Alright, here's the final question. Where did Turner hide the jewel? Once you piece all together all them once you piece together all the information we've gathered so far, you'll definitely figure it out. Okay. I'll give you a hint. The jewel was most certainly taken out of the mansion and a Pokemon was used to do it. Pokemon? Yeah, think about the unique characteristics of each Pokemon in the mansion. Which one of them has the ideal features for hiding the jewel? Ramorant. I told y'all. Okay. The moment he said he was feeling bloated, I knew it. <clears throat> Ramorant said he could gulp down anything, right? So the jewel is most likely hidden in his belly. Yes, you got it. Turner made Cramorant swallow the jewel, and the reason he feels full is because he's still got that jewel in his belly. Turner didn't have time to retrieve the jewel after the theft, did he? Nope, I'm positive the jewel is still in Cramorant's belly. Now we have enough evidence to back Turner into a corner. We got him, boys. We gotta bring Cramorant back to the mansion. Tickle his belly, and then he's gonna throw up the jewel in front of everybody. Okay. Okay. We've got all the proof we need. Now we just have to catch the culprit. Let's go tell Holiday to gather everyone involved with the case. Are you ready, Tim? Finally, it's over. Yeah, let's go. Let's reveal the truth together. This is it. Let's take care of business. Everyone, thank you for coming. This sudden conference had better be important. It is. We've identified the real culprit. 
Have you now? Yes, Mr. Barnes isn't the one who stole the jewel. Oh, oh. Who did it then? I'll explain everything from the beginning. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm listening. Let's start with how the culprit entered the jewel storage room. There were no signs of forced entry on the door, <coughs> so the culprit must have used the key. But Growlithe was guarding the key. Hmm. No one but my husband or Barnes could have taken the key from Growlithe. Yes, exactly. So how did they... I guess it must have been Barnes then. Ooh, he's shaking! No, it wasn't. He's breaking! You see, the culprit had a trick up their sleeve for taking the key. Oh, oh my god. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm. How did the culprit get the key? They made Growlithe fall asleep, obviously. Okay. The culprit used sleep powder to make Growlithe fall asleep. And after that, they took the key. Do you have evidence of that? Of course. Take a close look at Growlithe's food bowl, Inspector. You'll find traces of Lilligan's sleep powder in it. Of course. So that's how the culprit got into the jewel storage room. But they couldn't possibly have cut open that sturdy display case in such a short time. Yeah, good point. Ooh. No, they could have if they had Pokemon accomplices. <laughs> no way! Pokemon? Which Pokemon cut open the case? Um... Ponyard. The culprit <laughs> somehow used Whimsicott and Ponyard. And got Ponyard to cut open the case. What? Uh, how is that even possible? No way! We may understand now how the jewel was stolen. But... That doesn't necessarily prove that Barnes is innocent. He's throwing, he's throwing! Actually, I do have proof that Mr. Barnes is innocent. The note! The note! We discovered this note in a Trubbish's possession. Uh, a note? Uh-oh! The culprit jotted down their whole plan. They wanted to frame Mr. Barnes for the crime. Then that would mean Barnes is innocent. <gasps> so who's the real culprit? The real culprit is right here with us. What do you mean? It's me, the detective. It's Larry Turner. The thief who stole the Aurora drop. It's... Mr. Turner, you're the culprit. Uh, who, me? But, but, but I'm a victim of this crime. Ponyard punched me. Yeah, dude, you don't have a black eye. It punched you, huh? Ponyard has blades for hands, and I don't see any cuts on you. Oop. <sighs> dude, these camera angles are so funny. If you really think I'm the culprit, then where's the jewel? I don't have it on me, and I haven't set foot outside the mansion. Where's the jewel? Isn't it obvious? <coughs> it's with a Pokemon. <gasps> what? Which Pokemon has the jewel? Um, Cromorant. Of course you don't have the stolen jewel. You hid it. In Cramorant's belly. Uh, excuse me? Cramorant's maybe Turner's partner, but even so... Where is that Cramorant anyway? Mr. Turner, you clearly put a lot of thought into your plan. But when we investigated the crime scene, we found a Cramorant feather. And you underestimated Growlithe's sense of responsibility. Those two things did you in. Now, please call your Cramorant. <clears throat> 
cram rat. All right, let me handle this. Gucci, Gucci, go. <laughs> oh, it scared him. Wait, what's on his back? There it is, the Aurora drop. And the key to the storage room, too. That is a huge gem. I'm afraid you can't talk your way out of this, Mr. Turner. <sighs> I was so close to living the easy life. I shouldn't have teamed up with someone I barely knew. Who? Hmm. <clears throat> I'm sure Holiday will look into his accomplice. Right. Let's leave that to the police. Was I wrong this whole time? For us here, the Aurora Drop was a symbol of hope. I thought it could bring hope to even more people. That's why I decided to donate it. But I never thought it would lead to an incident like this. Maybe I should forget about donating it and just keep it quietly locked up in the house. Goodness gracious, you of all people. Do you really think so little of the Aurora Drop? What are you saying, Claudia? Didn't you tell me yourself? That you hoped whoever looked at the Aurora Drop could not only see its beauty, but also feel cheered up and encouraged by it. Are you really going to give up on that hope just because of a stroke of bad luck? Wouldn't that be a terrible waste? Don't you agree, Barnes? Indeed, madam. It's just as you say. Mr. Dennis, your plan to donate that jewel to the people of the Rhyme City was most certainly not a mistake. People believe- please believe in yourself and do what you think is best. Claudia. Barnes, forgive me. I think I let myself get too shaken by what happened today. I believe in the beauty of the Aurora Drop and the people of Rhyme City. As you should. Claire Fable. <coughs> but Claudia, weren't you against the donation? Don't misunderstand me. I just don't want to deal with you moping around like this for the rest of our lives, that's all. <laughs> I see. Thank you, Claudia. This incident has forced me to reconsider, shall we say, some of my views. Clefable, Ducklick, Growlithe, let's all eat together from now on. Gow. Yeah. It looks like Mr. Dennis and the others are all getting along better now. Yeah, that about wraps this up. Ironic, huh? Crameron swallowed the jewel, and now you've got to swallow the bitter consequences. Well, let's go. Lock him up. Yeah. Damn, that gym is humongous. Oh my god. Cremorin, are you alright? Huh? Oh, oh. Oh. Don't just stand there. Hurry up and grab it. Right. <laughs> Do they not have, like, Pokeballs? How could this be happening? Sanjeev. Turner! Uh, hold on. I swear I had nothing to do with that. Why don't we discuss this down at the station? What was the device on Cromeron's back? Probably the co-conspirator did it. Hmm. Growlithe, you did a great job. Hey, Pikachu! Look! Grimlin! Oh! Are you leaving already? See you around! <laughs> Say, Tim, did you notice Cramorant's back? Yeah, there was something glowing on it. I've never seen anything like it. I wonder, <clears throat> maybe Turner didn't know what was going on. Something tells me this is just the beginning. Later that evening, 
at Tim's apartment. I'm home. Tim's back! Well, you sure are home late. Why are they still here? Oh my god, he brought the girl over. Good evening. Oh no! Oh, and who is this? My classmate, Rachel. My classmate. It's nice to meet you. Is she your girlfriend? <laughs> Classic. Huh? If only. <laughs> okay. Can I pause? Dude, I cannot pause! Oh my god. That's so DOM. I can't. I can't. I can't. <clears throat> Actually, Rachel's here because... Hello, sorry to barge in so suddenly. I was hoping to get some advice from the great detective here. I didn't realize his family was visiting, though. Welcome, Rachel. We didn't mean to startle you. Sophie and I just arrived in Rhyme City yesterday. We came to see my brother's award ceremony. Oh, really? <laughs> then this is probably the first time we've all seen each other in a while. I really hope I'm not in the way. Please, don't worry about it. We'll be in town for a while yet. Make yourself at home. I'll make some tea. Thank you, really. See, Tim? I told you Irene and Sophia would understand. Yeah, you're right. I'm glad. Oh my god, there's so many missions. Holy shoot. Oh my god, four hours? You're still playing? No, not anymore. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Holy. I did not think like one main mission would take four hours. Oh my god. It was still fun though. I like the little mini games. They weren't too annoying. Like the ones where you had to like, oh, you had to talk to this Pokemon. They need to find another one. That wasn't too bad. It kind of forces you to like learn the environment a little bit. I liked how when you were in Growlithe mode, how there was like Pokemon specific missions. That was cute. I didn't think the game would be this story heavy. Like it's a lot of dialogue. So if you don't like story games, then you would not like this game. I don't know if I would play this on my own. I think it's fun to do the voices, honestly. That's the part I was looking most forward to for Detective Pikachu. Um, <coughs> Obviously my voice is strained today. People were saying it took 12 hours to beat the game. I wonder how many like main missions there are. I would assume like four or five? I don't know. But I completed the missing jewel and solved the mystery in one sitting. I did it. I will finish this on stream. I don't know if I'll play tomorrow. We'll see. Because I might be busy Friday. I'm busy Wednesday. I really wanted to stream on Friday the 13th, but I might have something planned that day. I might have a meeting. Ew. Um. So yeah. Maybe I'll continue this tomorrow. Maybe I won't. I'll see. But I know I do want to finish this on stream. I won't play it offline. I promise. No fingers crossed. I promise. I will play it for stream. <coughs> um. I think we can wrap it up here for today. If we want to do calligraphy, all you need to do is use your channel points. And I will write your name. You guys have 10 seconds to redeem. If you want to do calligraphy today. Any redeemers? Also, do not redeem sing a song. I cannot sing today. I know you would. I I'll refund you. I cannot sing. I tried earlier. I tried. <laughs> not that. At least I refunded you. Some people don't refund channel redemptions. They just straight up scam. Which I would never scam. I would never ever. I redeemed it right before you said it. Oh, there's lag, right? <coughs> Wait, how do I close the game?
I think my favorite part was the sequence at the end where there was like the slow zoom in and zoom outs of the characters. I think this game is like a, a like a television drama. I think that's what it's supposed to be. I don't think it's necessarily a good stream game because since a lot of the actual gameplay is dialogue, it's a lot of like viewers just listening. There's not much opportunity for chat engagement. So I think this type of game is better for like YouTube content than stream content. But I'll, I'll still play it for stream. <clears throat> I think this is this this will probably be the first like YouTube playthrough that I edit though. Will I ever make YouTube exclusive content? Um, I will. But at this point in time, it's not really worth putting that much time or effort into it until I have a larger YouTube audience. Because, um, <clears throat> the point of me uploading stream highlights is to get people to watch, like, the live streams, right? Because I don't necessarily want to be a YouTuber because that requires a lot more production value, a lot more like just time making and editing. So it would only be worth it to go full speed into YouTube content if I had a production team, even a small one. So, um... <clears throat> I think until I gain a decent platform on YouTube, I probably won't make YouTube exclusive content. Which I know sucks, but I honestly think doing things on stream is funner. <laughs> like having a chat. Like imagine doing a taste test by myself, that'd be so awkward. <clears throat> My yeah. Rip YouTube frogs? No, no, no. YouTube frogs still get like content though. Like, my two most recent gaming videos on the channel did pretty decent. A lot of the views are from non subscribers, which is good and also bad. That means like the actual thumbnail and the title are good enough to attract a YouTube audience. <sighs> like, YouTube frogs are still getting content. And honestly, the YouTube frogs, they're not gonna go back and watch, like, a three-hour stream. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up here, guys. I streamed for longer than I thought, a lot longer than I thought. My voice is fucked. Thank you all for watching. The first few hours of Detective Pikachu Returns. I will be doing a full playthrough on stream. Might not, I won't do it all in one sitting. Or I won't do it all, um... <coughs> all um what you call it all like this week i'll just play it when i want to play it would i ever go live on youtube um i don't know i'm not sure i i don't even know what the youtube live ui looks like i clicked on it once i got scared and i <laughs> exited out of it <laughs> um if I did unlock YouTube memberships, then I would do member-only streams. Like, similar to how we do sub-only streams here. Um, because I don't- Because when you stream on Twitch, there's a way to, like, download your VOD. You can- I know on YouTube VODs, you can trim them. Which is great. It, it only really makes sense to stream on YouTube if you have an established platform. Like, because not many people go to- t Or go to YouTube for live content. Like, if I had, like, 10,000 subs on YouTube, then if I did a live stream, I'd probably have, like, 100 viewers. Because 10,000 people would get that push notification. 
versus my YouTube channel now that has 100 subscribers. Um, I would maybe have two people watch on YouTube. And since I don't have a way to monetize on YouTube at all, like I don't have memberships, I don't have super chats, um, it would not be smart. Like I would be missing out on potential sub revenue here. That's why it's important to get a monetization on any single platform you have. That way, if one fails, you still have another scapegoat. <coughs> anyway, that's why I don't, I'm not going to stream on YouTube yet. It'd only be smart if I had a lot of subscribers. Okay, thank you all for watching. I appreciate you all for hanging out. I will see you guys probably tomorrow, if not Thursday. Because I don't know if my voice will be back by tomorrow. Hopefully. Hopefully. I'm PSA2 praying. This last week has sucked. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye. Bye, go, bobo. Oh, wait, while you're at it, um, make sure you're following my social media Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and new YouTube video. New YouTube video. Which is the best Pokemon mobile game? It's a long video. Put it on in the background if you miss me. Smile. <laughs> Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.